Welcome back, Pioneer fans. We're here with another exciting matchup. And also, welcome to all our Highland Community College friends who are joining us today for an exciting, uh, well, an exciting week six. Uh, we actually have some news for you. We yeah. lied to you last yeah. week. Sorry, I'm a liar. We are. Uh, We're there's a, liar. a reason I'm not a math major, and that's because I did my math wrong. And so, <laughs> ba basically, what happened is. Point Park Valorant is not completely out of the postseason just yet. And so basic basically kind of what the deal is is you know, I said I said last last game was the most important, which I think is still true. You know what? We weren't lying. Right. I mean we, we were just we just wanted last game to be exciting, but right, this game you know? is going to be extra exciting right, because Point right. Park and Highland Community College both do still have a chance to make it to playoffs, but it will all come down to next week. Now, in order for either of these teams to win, they do have to win the next two games. That's right. So basically, Point Park here, if they want any shot of the postseason, they have to win out their games for the season. And even then, they still might not make the playoffs mm -hmm. because it depends on what the other teams do. So. You know, Point Park University, they recently played UMF, and they got the victory over there. Basically, UMF needs to win one game and lose one, or lose Actu two. Oh, yeah, and you know what? So this week, as you said, they are facing Converse University. Now, that might be good news for you Pioneer fans or you Highland Community College fans out there because uh, as we saw in the last couple weeks here with Point Park Pioneer Valorant, um, we did see that the Pioneers were victorious over UMF but uh, did lose to Converse University. So uh, all, if uh, everything goes has, as it has been this whole season, um, Converse University, again, is still undefeated mm -hmm. in the Star League right now. Um, you should expect to see a Converse University win. However, this is still anybody's game. Um, next week, though, UMF does play Highland University. So that does mean for Point Park, uh, if UMF does lose this uh, this game that they play against Converse right. this week and Point Park wins tonight, Point Park has a shot at playoffs. Uh, conversely, if Highland Community College wins this week and Point Park loses, Highland Community College or UMF could make it to the playoffs. It will all come down to next week's game. So this is a very, very important game for this NACE group stage right now. And I know we're throwing a <laughs> lot of different random team names out at you. So if you're not too familiar with kind of the whole rankings right now, just know UMF has got to win one, lose one. And we haven't even talked about the other factor yet, which is UT Dallas. And what happened is UT Dallas, they lost to UMF, to University of Michigan Flint. Yes, they did. If you're Point Park or if you're Highland, you need UT Dallas to lose both of their next games. Y yes, you do. Now, Point Park and Highland University both stand 1-3 right now. Um, of course, both having one win under their belt. Now, um, again... If you're a Point Park Pioneer fan and you've been following us all along, that still might be good news because, as we all know, uh, Point Park University did beat UMF. Now, is that um, a freak week or is that something that's consistent with the standings? Only the next two weeks will really be able to tell. Um, but for all you Pioneer fans out there, don't fret. There's still a chance for them There's to be in the playoffs. Chance. We lied. We lied last yeah, week. Yeah, my bad. We're liars. My bad. But, uh, yeah, so, yes, last week was very exciting, but this week is very, very, very exciting because it's still anybody – anybody has a shot mm -hmm. at going to the playoffs. Of course, uh, there will be, you know, the crowd favorite Converse University, and they still are undefeated. Um, and, unfortunately, for <laughs> Point Park and Highland Community College, uh, everyone needs them to stay that way if right. they want a chance to move on. So, uh, good luck to both teams playing today, but uh, especially good luck to – Converse University. And as we start to get the map picks in shortly, I want to finish talking about this situation. So, you know, if you have UT Dallas going 0-2 in the next weeks, and you have UMF going 1-1 one one or 0-2, and, and you have... Wait. Hold up. Wait, did I just math wrong again? Hold up. Now I gotta think about something. Because here's the thing. If UMF loses both of their games, mm -hmm. they're not tied with UT... Oh! I'm a liar! I just want everyone to know, for the record out there, all of my math I'm getting directly yeah. from Princess Ari herself. Yeah. So, don't blame me. Yeah, that's I'm, I'm just the messenger. So, I lied. UMF needs to go one and one They cannot lose their next two games. If they do not 
win one game, they are not tied with UT Dallas, meaning right. that we will not be in a three-way tie with Point Park, UT Dallas, and UMF. So That's correct. you may say, well, what's the important part about being in a three-way tiebreaker? Well, three ways, meaning it goes down to map differential. If it's only two, it goes to head-to-head. -head. Unfortunately, Point Park loses to UT Dallas there. So with map but differential. But does not lose to UMF there. That's correct. But, but in a three-way tie. Well, there's no possibility. Oh, that's right. Of that happening. That's right. You're right. We mathed wrong earlier. <laughs> but we're math we mathed wrong last week. We mathed wrong earlier today. But do not worry. We are mathing right right now. And statistics, you know, we love statistics. And if Bind is our first map here, I believe this has been the one that Point Park has won most often. Mm -hmm. Now we have we were talking about this uh, right before we went live today. So those of you who have been following the Point Park Pioneers, you know um, that Bind has been in a, a historically good map um, when we when excuse me the Pioneers played uh, Converse University. They went 10-13. Now that is a loss, um, but a lot closer than the 3-13 they saw there on breeze um also i want to take it back to the week before when they played umf i believe it was 13-2 was it uh, that they won around there something like that i'm um, completely dominated again uh, i think their next map was a little bit closer i want to say it was like 13-8 on split there mm -hmm. um but again we have seen good things coming from point park pioneers on bind so i really think everyone needs to pay attention to this first map if the pioneers are having a tough time on this first map going to ascent might uh they might struggle a little bit i mean statistics show that you know point park hasn't done necessarily the best on ascent because it seems like most teams prepare ascent pretty often as it's just kind of, it's kind of like the you know the you know the meta and you kind of everyone has a practice because they like their favorite mm -hmm. map however it is again if that's the pick that HCC picks, we are practiced on this map. Mm -hmm. So we definitely have a chance to, if you are going to say that every map pick is your mm -hmm. win, you have a chance to steal away that map. And of course, this decider coming out is split. Now, Point Park Pioneers did win against UMF on split 13-8. Of course, not that 13-2 we saw there on Bind. But like we said, Bind has statistically been one of their better maps. Um, they do still have that win there on split. Now, whether or not Point Park wins here, uh, this matchup and these maps uh, specifically will be very telling going into next week for Highland Community College, uh, what their matchup against UMF will be looking like. Um, and so we can kind of start to speculate about what next week would look like in that UMF versus Highland uh, Community College game. Now, of course, this is all speculation. We do have to wait a week to see that matchup come through, but uh, ex exciting things coming, um, and so this is definitely a very telling matchup for not just this week, um, and not just for, for hopes of that playoff season, but to see what next week will look like, especially for your Highland University or University of Michigan Flint. And I will be letting you know, I'll be following along with the other games as well as this one, so I will be able to let you know around the end of stream what the results of the other games are or what point they are at. Because that might be the determining factor to whether you uh, your team goes home happy today. Maybe they're the, the, their chances that postseason could be gone. Exactly. I mean, if UMF have an upset against Converse University this week, uh, it doesn't matter who wins uh, Pioneers versus Highland Community College. Both teams are out of that playoff spot. Everyone's going home. Everyone's going home. Which, you know, we love home. We love it home we here love right home. at Point Park. But. We do love home here at Point Park, and we hope those Highland Community College fans out there, you can call us home for a little bit as we take you through these next two or three maps. Now, right there on the screen, you are seeing Pioneer player Creep. He is the IGL for uh, the Point Park Valorant team right now. Mm -hmm. um, so I know he's just getting ready. It looks like, you know, a smile on his face. I'm sure trying to keep the vibes up. Before we go into this first map, I'm sure they're feeling very, very happy that the first map pick is Bind. Of course, we don't know what bands went through, but we do know what picks went through. Mm -hmm. And, you know, as, as much as you say that these teams are going to be happy to play this game, they are definitely nervous because there mm -hmm. is a lot on the line here. For these teams, by the way, kind of going back a little bit too earlier, talking about this map differential. Both of these teams, if they want to maximize their potential to make the postseason, they want to win this game. Mm -hmm. two to zero they exactly. don't want to drop a single map you want to win your map pick and you want to steal theirs mm -hmm. and that you don't want to go to split you don't want to go to split 
Absolutely not. Um, I don't think anyone ever wants to go to a map three. Now, of course, if you are the team that loses map one, you definitely want to go that to split. Is true. <laughs> That's very true. Because nobody wants to lose. Nobody wants to lose. I don't want to lose. I'm not even playing. We gotta have a, we gotta have a loser though. That's the whole point of a competition. That is the point of a competition, and that is why this is, is a best of three. Now, so far we have only really seen two maps been played out because, you know, a team wins both. But you know, it, it still would be exciting to see a third map. We haven't actually gone to that third map of the best of three, and you know, Point Park and Highland right now both standing at one three. This could be the week. I mean, yes, there was one week, I know, for Point Park where they did go to a map three against UT Dallas. They did come out victorious on oh, that sunset. You know what? That's right. That's right. I unfortunately was not here for that map, but I did mm. see the map recap of that. And I am sorry. I am a liar once again. We see, did go to map three. now whose math is wrong? I wasn't here. I wasn't here. It's not really math either. I wasn't here. And it is not math. Yeah. Um, Certainly, though, those of you who have been Pioneer fans all along and have been keeping track, you did know that we did go to map three against UT Dallas. Now, we did lose there, and that is going back to what we're talking about, um, different scenarios as far as who can make the playoff spots. Um, there, there's really a lot riding on this week. This is going to be mm -hmm. very telling going forward. Um, and, and next week, uh, depending on, you know, kind of the outcomes that we see this week, um, but we don't even have to talk about next week. Uh, let's focus on this right. week. Again, we will be keeping up with the UMF Converse game. We will try to let you know what is going on there. Um, but I'm just excited to get into this matchup. I think this is going to be a good, good matchup today. Yeah, I feel like I'm in the like the Smurf movie, right? I think that's what it is. Are we there yet? Are we there yet? Like you know, I mean, you have your your Blue Jays I, I hoodie do have on. My, my Blue Jays hoodie. Blue on. like a Smurf. I mean, I do have to support the pirates here in pittsburgh you do have to support the pirates here in pittsburgh that is correct yeah um both teams not happy with the yeah outcome i was just season. going to yeah. say the same thing maybe next year maybe next year there's always next year and the same with point park university's yes. valorant team because they could go they could be the converse of next year they could be flawless same goes for hcc as well well you know what we don't even have to to wait until next year of course um just in, in case point park pioneers do uh, end their run in the Star League season. They are not done playing Valorant for this year. Um, they are going to be playing Seaval coming up. Mm -hmm. um, Which they're is also Collegiate Valorant. That is Collegiate for, Valorant. For those who don't know. Different league, um, but they will also be playing again in the winter and spring at the start of next semester. So even though you know they might lose and they might be out of the season, that does not mean they're done for the year. Um, could still certainly come back. Uh, and I, I do... Um, see some good things out of this team. I think they're just getting better from what I've seen. I know that was a tough loss last week for the Pioneers. Um, they did play against Converse University, who are undefeated. Mm -hmm. But as, as heart-wrenching that really that 13-3 loss was, I mean, uh, Converse's uh, neon wildfire Whoa. went absolutely crazy. A KD of over five that game. That's ridiculous. That's, I mean, I, I, I would not have been able to uh, do much in that situation. It's just hard when you have a standout player and when you're going against someone like that. However, they should be feeling very good about their performance there on bind, bringing it to 10-13. Uh, of course, a slow start there on bind. I believe it was seven rounds before right. we saw that yeah. Sunseri ace to turn it around. Um, but they should still be feeling very good about that. I had a chance to sit down with some of the players before that match last week, and, you know, they said they're excited. They were excited to play Converse University. Unfortunately, uh, they didn't really have much hope. That does n That's not to say they couldn't have won. Um, however, because they know Converse University was undefeated, has been playing in these T2 tournaments, I don't think that loss was as tough of a pill to swallow. And so going into this ne this week, really, even though they're coming off of a loss, I think they sh still are feeling um, hopeful. And, and I think just that experience they have under their belt and, and the really mentality shift I've seen throughout all these players that grow throughout the season. I, I think they're ready to play Highland Community College. And if they can just stay in that headspace, they have a really good chance moving forward. Yeah, I definitely, definitely agree with you. And you can see all the players kind of scooting in towards their computers. You know, it's probably going to be game time very, very shortly. So stay with us. You know, Kai, I have some, I have some exciting news. I know it's okay. I, I know it's not exactly you know, about the team. I mean, it is, kind of. So I found out yesterday that I'm going to be practicing in a scrim with the team. Oh. 
So All right, everybody, you heard it here <laughs> first. Exciting news from Ari. Ari's playing in in a scrim. Woohoo! I'm replacing Sunseri. That's not going to go well for for me. It'll go very well for you. Okay. Next Sunseri. How lucky are the pioneers to have such an amazing amazing analyst and player <laughs> in Princess Ari to play uh, of course I'll be so sad if you actually have to play in yeah, a game. Yeah, because if I have to play, then who's who's here with you? I'll just be by myself and I'll cry. We can't have that. We can't have that. So unfortunately, Sunseri does have to stay healthy and does have to stay uh, free for all the games moving forward. So I can have the beautiful Ari here on the desk with me. That's a little bit selfish of me. I'm not going <laughs> to lie. But <laughs> as we're talking about that now, we are getting ready to go into this game right here. Now we do see that Point Park has locked in their agents. I, uh, those of you who have been with the Pioneers, you do know this lineup here that we have right here. Yes. Very familiar. Definitely this is the cream of the crop when you're talking about familiar familiarity for Point Park when it comes to this double controller, the Cypher, the Rays, and the Sky. Now, looking at this new comp coming out for HCC, you're going to be seeing this KJ Yoru, which, you know, isn't typically what you see when you're watching a Point Park stream, but you sure love to see the difference in variety for agents. You do, and I think what I have liked that I've seen from the Pioneers, of course, uh, you know, I'm excited for this matchup either way. However, I do not know a whole lot about Highland Community College, the type of comps they like to run, um, but I do know that the Pioneers ha have kind of stuck with this, this comp, and they have dealt with different agents in the past on this map, um, so I'm sure they're excited, one, that they got that first map pick here on Bind 2, you know, I, I, we have seen them play against a Rays, a Sky, a Yoru, a Brim. Um, I think even a KJ here on Bind. Mm -hmm. Maybe not all together. I don't remember the exact team comps we've seen in the past, but they should not be feeling too, too bad here uh, coming into this matchup. Yes, definitely, 100%. And, you know, I'm, I'm really, really excited to get in this game. I'm like, I know you keep saying, I know you say this every time, but I'm at the edge of my seat, even though I don't have a seat. I am. <laughs> And you get it. Yeah, you finally, I, finally I, get, I get it. it. I finally get it. You know, I just, I want to see these teams play. I want to see a good game. I kind of want to see a 2-0 because I want to see one of these teams in the playoffs. I, I mean, I definitely think there's a shot that we could see either team in the playoffs. Now, um, of course, if Point Park does win this week, I think there's a very good chance that UMF does lose to Commerce University. I also think if Highland wins this week, if they're able to beat Point Park here, I think we should expect them to beat UMF next week. Right. If things go how they have been going the rest of the season. That is, you are, you're, you're correct. Your math is mathin'. I'm, I'm trying. We, we have to catch up with our math at yeah. some point. We're, we're a little bit lacking on, the, on that. We are. If we're wrong, you can fact check us next week. <laughs> yeah, you know, it's, it's fine. You have to come back next week, though. That's right. You you all definitely need to come back next week. And also, make sure that you keep up with these other teams as well. I'm not sure if they stream them, but you should be able to find them on social media. And keep up and follow the bracket. And you can go on the NACE website to just kind of see what's going on in this group stage. All right, now, Sunseri going to be finding the opening pick of the game on the Twizzy following a Selzy Flash. That's going to be beautiful. And if you're either team, you want to get the starting pick for the round for the game. Anything. Anything you can get is going to be beautiful. Now... This seems to be kind of just some sort of B presence, but they're going to hit the TP now. So it's going to be a full rush onto the A site. And if you can see on the map, there is nobody from Highland there. Absolutely no one is on site. So this is going to be a free site, 5v4 retake for Highland to try and conquer. Yeah, and I love how uh, Sanceri got that opening pick there and, and signaled, hey, let's rotate. We have numbers advantage. Of course, that numbers advantage is not there anymore. Slim did get one pick. It is now 4v4, but Bomb is planted and highland community college still needs to make it on site and now big tonka going to be finding the kill on this on Sari. so numbers now actually in their favor cursed setting up this crossfire with clark and cursed is going to be able to find one clark's going to be able to find the second now it's a 2v1 i think yes big tonka finding one and now clark trying to find the kj it does Ooh. not get the shot slim is going to take clark down and that's going to be the defuse out for highland esports going to be a 1-0 lead for them 
It is, and, and I know we've all, well, we've both drilled this into all of your heads the past couple of weeks that pistol rounds do matter. In Point Park, Pioneers traditionally have had a hard time there on that pistol round. Now, they did not win this pistol round, uh, and there were still two online there for Highland Community College, but they were both very, very low. Lots of chip damage on them. Um, so even though uh, that was a... Uh, really 2-0 there at the end uh, when you talk about players online. I think that was very close there for Point Park, and I wouldn't count them out just yet. You know, I'm curious to see what Point Park's win rate is on pistol rounds, because I want to see if that's something that might be a turn f turning factor in their game. And Twizzy is going to be finding two, finding three on this eco, and hello, that's what the Marshall does when somebody doesn't have shields. It's going to be a one-tap to the body. Now Creep picking up this Marshall, looking for the shot, and finds it on the dismissive. What a nice little shot there by Creep. It's a little hesitant to put on push onto the site here because, you know, you don't exactly have the best guns. You don't know where everyone is. So you're going to be a little bit hesitant here. And now I believe this guy was spotted, so the Flash is going to come out in response. The dog as well to try and see if anyone's there. But I think this one, Sari, actually creeped up in the tunnel. The question is, is the... Is Highland Esports aware? And Sonseri now spots the Brimstone and is going to find that pick. So that's going to be really, really big. And you know that there is at least one more player on B, which means this KJ's chances are on A. Sonseri, though, walking straight into this KJ and is going to pull out the knife to get caught red-handed. Big Tonko now trying to secure the kill on a creep. Creep trying to find some sort of damage somewhere. But it looks like he might have this B-side free. I think it does, especially when you saw that Sunset Lurk and then move back over to that A site. Now, I did like the play and I liked the lurking raise there. However, the players were not in a position to trade each other out. And that's kind of what did them in in the end. Of course, Bomb is down. It is all down to Creep. We saw some beautiful shots from Creep earlier and we can expect to see them again. There is one Molly online. Not sure if Creep has any lineups, but it does look like both... Highland esports players are going to be coming from. Ooh, whoa! What a nice shot there by Creep. That is 3K, and it looks like we do have lineups coming from Creep. Oh, that's going to be a beautiful lineup. I love to see that. Now it's going to be 7.5 seconds before the player can tap the spike oh. again. But Creep not going to quite get the shot onto Slim. Slim probably going to be able to get the defuse here. And yes, the second round secured for Highland esports. So. Point Park did a pretty good job there of dismantling the setup from Highland. I think Point Park did a great job there. Now, unfortunately, you could see Creep looking a little frustrated. Did not get that last shot there. Uh, and unfortunately for the Pioneers, Highland uh, Community College did get that diffuse off. However, when we talk about converting pistol rounds, that was so incredibly close I, I, again we we should have expected highland esports to dominate that round and it was very very close now uh point park esports do have a full team with rifles we should expect from what we have seen so far we should expect them to win this round now again this is oh boy oh Ooh, and creep. creep finding the collateral but doesn't expect the four-man push out of a short but now that gives sonseri this timing to creep all the way up Excuse my pun, that was a really bad one. But to find the space on the site, and Big Tonk is going to find Curse. So now this is actually a little bit scary for Point Park. There's three players online for them, and now they got to get the spike down. And they do have the spike down, but now it's about securing the round. Twizzy trying to lurk up and find Sonseri. And Sonseri is going to say, not in my house. I have a brain, and I know that you're coming to fight me. Now it's at 3v1 in favor of Point Park. And this should hopefully be a win for them, assuming all goes to plan. Highland, I think, trying to do just as much damage as I can here. Might pull out the save, depending on what the call is there. Just trying to lurk up into what we call U-Haul lamps and trying to get a pick. Yeah, now it is all down to Big Tonka here on that sky. Is going to need to get timing. Sees one and does not quite get Selzy there in the end. That is a point park. University round on the board. Now, this next round should be more telling. Um, we have to wait to see what the buys that come in are, but everyone should be able to buy at full rifles. I wasn't really keeping track of the economy, um, and I think you all know why. Our math has been a little bit off the past couple weeks, so I'm not going to try to do that. But yes, like we said, full rifles coming in cursed with that bulldog, uh, which is still a rifle, but not one shot to the head. 
when everyone has shields. Uh, that You know, honestly, that's kind of an interesting call for me. Personally, you know, this is a personal take, but I, I kind of like the Vandal Light Shields as opposed to the Bulldog Full Shields because that one-shot capability is going to be great. And like you see there, Sun Seri is going to pick up the shot on the slim. Beautiful, beautiful damage. But Twizzy trading that right back. And this bomb is going to go down for Clark. Clark trying to go to re position, but this Yoru ult is invested. So all of the positionings of Point Park are going to be found out, and they're going to try and crunch down on this setup. Yeah, I mean, that's what you have to do. Information is so vital in that game, and that is why Cypher is such a strong agent here. Um, Ooh, no that timing was really well played. But the Cypher ult, oh, ouch. That's, that, that that's going to hurt. That does hurt. But the Look. Molly's out. I mean, they still have plenty of time, though. So. They do have plenty of time. Uh, and unfortunately for Point Park, not able to get that other one on the board. But I don't think they're feeling too bad yet. Remember, last week they did take uh, the the map against Converse University to 10-13 after losing seven straight rounds in a row. Um, I think they just need to regroup. Now, I know that both teams know a lot rides on this game right here. So I'm sure tensions are very, very high. Yeah, I mean, definitely, you know. You got Clark on the end here, as cool, cool as a cucumber. I can't speak today, I guess. <laughs> but, you know, Clark's always pretty cool on the end. Just kind of no motion except for when he gets his aces. And when he gets his aces, he is absolutely activated. That's for sure. Well, and you know what? Those of you who are just joining us, if Clark is able to get two aces in one game, in one map. One map. One map. In one map, the entire rest of the team has to shave their head. So... I think we all know why Clark's celebrating an ace. Right. I mean, I, I want to see the team shave their heads. I want to see. Uh, are you? I would not change my, shave my head. I mean, you are scrimming with them. Uh, You're part of the team. You know, I, I might, hate to break it to I you. might have to resign. Um, just like Sanseri is going to have to resign his life there. Too slim with the judge. And Salzi picks up two in response. So beautiful number, numbers advantage. Four point part. Clark going to get the plant down. And now this is a three before retake sky seekers online and maybe point park wants to change up their post plant setup here as dismissive takes down clark as he's trying to get back to where he wants to go but these seekers i wouldn't be surprised and yep there they go they get popped right off the bat and oh this is gonna be a big one i don't think they know that clark creep has the judge and yep creep is gonna find twizzy with that judge and dismissive now trying to pick up this kill on selzy the lineup goes out. Hopefully, he's going to land on bomb. Definitely is not. Does creep. not quite, does it? Ooh, creeps. Creep. Well, not creep. Cursed with a nice share of shot to secure that round. So that's a must. That's a must-win round for that Point Park. That is a must-win round for Point Park. Um. So one thing I want to touch on that I I noticed Point Park. We have noticed this in the past. It looked like they got a little bit better at it. Um. But I'm starting to see it here as well. They're not always putting themselves in positions to be traded. Yeah, yeah. Uh, sometimes they are. Um, but I think a lot of these rounds they didn't lose or maybe a couple of the players that went down um, definitely could have made it a little bit less closer on the side of the Pioneers had they just gone with a teammate, made calls together. Now, I know a lot of this game is just aim, raw aim, um, and, and certainly abilities as well, but being able to put yourself in favorable positions is a major, major part of that. And already, what the Highland Esports members just dropping like flies there, and Sanseri all the way into their spawn. He just jumped out of hookah. And he wanted the third one. He really did. I think he overheated well, a little bit. Well, you know there. what? But one thing I like that Sanseri does, even though Sanseri, yes, was not in a position to be traded like we were talking about, Sanseri does does his job as a duelist and create so much space. We see that on the A site with the satchels in. Yes, um, not able to find a kill before going down, but gets that space so the team is able to plant the bomb. And that is so important. Now it is all down to Lord Ayana Koji here. Um, and just down to 30 HP. Just going to be looking for some exit frags. It looks like maybe trying to get one more offline. Certainly not going to have enough time to defuse the bomb and get four Members offline, Ooh, but spotted. is going to be spotted out. Not Woo. much to do there. And Clark with that collat through tube there. That, that was a nice that flash by Selzy. I don't know if you saw that. That was beautiful. Right up into the sky. Again, uh, I'm not a ten Wow, my puns are bad today too. Oh, boy. It's going to be a rough one. I'm sorry, chat. It's going to be bad. Hopefully it doesn't go to map three. I like your, <laughs> I like your puns. Oh, 
Um, Joy. <laughs> beautiful sky flash, of course. Curse there on the cipher was able to spot um, Lord Ayana Koji there. Um, just a really tough situation. It l almost looked like the call was to save and look for exit frags. And I think maybe just kind of got a little bit nervous there at the end, thinking, hey, we need to get more guns off. This is an important matchup. Um, but I think saving that gun there might have been the better call. You're down to 30 HP and you're in a 1v4 situation with bomb down. Right. Well, here's the thing with that kind of round there. If you're on a kind of a like an eco buy, kind of a, a light round buy, you're buying for next if you're Highland. And mm -hmm. so if you save that rifle there, your loss bonus is not actually going to increase. You're only going to get 1,000 credits. So yes, you will be able to save that rifle, but the rest of your team, they're going to be, you know, they're buying rifles, but now your economy is going to be a little bit off. But were they on the light buy last round? I they thought were. They, oh, it they was were. A, it was a buy for next. So It was a buy for next. Sheriffs, there was a guardian, and I believe some, something else. Yeah, but I think, again, oh, Clark almost going to find Twizzy uh -oh. there, but not quite. Sunseri, though, does find it's dismissive. It is still a 4v4 and Twizzy there looking so, so incredibly low. Ooh, that's going to be a big brimstone ult. And I, I kind of like that. Brimstone Ooh. Stone old. Ooh, Sunseri gets caught out as the flash is not going to permit Sunseri to get one, but Selzy will be able to get one, that's for sure. And now this crossfire and two. They're going to be aware. One's in Hookah, but they're not going to be able to get that pick right off the bat. The trade is there. And now it's a 2v2. Selzy, can he find the shots? He sees them. But unfortunately, no avail as Big Tonka and Slim are going to convert this round for Highland Esports. I love all of the utility we saw in that round. I think a couple of these... Now, now we, I'm not saying we haven't been seeing utility. Um, we saw some nice flashes. Um, of course, Creep uh, has a lot of those Molly lineups. And we've also seen from Lord Ayana Koji um, some Brim Mollies as well. But we saw flashes... Uh, we saw mollies. We saw a brimstone ultimate come down that really delayed that plant there. Um, loved, loved, loved the utility usage. We saw a cypher cage. I mean, that's kind of what I'm expecting to see from two close teams here on this first map, but really in this matchup in general. I want to see utility. It's not just gunfights. You have two close teams. We need to see more of the utility. We need to see more trades. We need to see better positioning from both sides. And what you're kind of seeing from Point Park here on their attack is they usually like to push up this B long with this sky and maybe the raise every now and again. Because what you're doing is you're trying to get someone that's overextending and in a poor position to get traded and you're catching them out of gar uh, out guard, I guess. That's the right word. I don't know. But you get this free orb if that's mm -hmm. if no one's contesting you and that's kind of a lot of that's a big deal. It's a huge deal. We do see a lot of Point Park defaults coming in here on the attacking site and, and a lot of fight for orbs. And there's not really much of a fight Highland Esports willing to give them those orbs in order to hold sight a little Ooh. bit better. Silzy so going to find one peeking out of tube and a beautiful flash. Knows there's one there. Knows it's the sky. Honestly, if I'm Silzy here, I'm putting that dog and I'm saying, Sonseri, you go sick him, boy. <laughs> Get that kill. But Cursed, going to be finding one. Selzy going to be finding another big Tonka going, going down there. And the plant is out. Creep with the lineup as before. And I feel like we've seen this, except it wasn't a 5v2. Mm -hmm. A 4v2. It was not a 4v2, but it is a 4v2. Now Highland Esports are up in rounds, but are not up in numbers here. As we make our way through this eighth round, Sensei, just going to start... Uh, that's not what I'm looking for. I can't even think. Doesn't matter. Sunseri is going to find the kill on Lord Diana Koji. Uh, is going to be pretty, pretty low there, but doesn't matter when you have teammates to kind of finish up the job. That is a 4v2 successful hold there um, from Point Park Pioneers. And, you know, as, as close as these rounds are, you know, it's definitely represented by the scoreline. You know, it's 4-4. Four to four. Both teams kind of in a sim I was gonna say kind of in a similar economy position, mm -hmm. but not exactly. You know, not quite. You do have the same alt economy though. Both teams with three alts. Those are three big things that can turn the round either way for any team, depending on how they use them. That is now if Creep is able to get one orb or one kill, Creep will also have his ultimate online, and we're already seeing an ultimate Ooh. expended there, but it's not gonna find any 
utility there for the team. Lord Diana Koji with a beautiful sheriff shot on that satcheling raise. And I wish my we shots were like that. Yeah, I cannot use the sheriff mm -hmm. worth worth my life. But Twizzy certainly can as Twizzy finds a pick on the Clark. But Creep with one in response, and that's going to be 3v2 post plant. Creep with lineups. Oh, not with post plant. A spike isn't down, and Cypher cursed goes down, trying to get out with the spike, and now all of a sudden, it's disaster for Point Park. Highland finds two picks, and now it's just up to Creep in a 1v2 scenario with a raise ult against him. Yeah, but Creep does have his own ultimate on board, and a molly might uh, consider using that to kind of block off sight and pick up the spike instead of using it for post plant i don't know that's a tough call there um now if anyone can do it i think it is creep but highland esports should have now rifles recovered Ooh. and is just not going to be able to do anything about that double swing right there not sure if you get to hear that but you can certainly see it on his face angry about that one but it is hard swinging into two players right there creep did a valiant job but highland community college that was a very very important run for mm -hmm. them that was a huge round for them yes they were on a light buy and now two rifles recovered and are going to be able to buy up um of course point park university does still have that economy where they also have rifles right definitely i mean if you know that's an interesting play there by sonseri you know you obviously you know, the call was, I'm going to raise ultimate mm -hmm. out, I'm going to go get space, and I'm going to try and get a kill with my ult. If I die, I die. Mm -hmm. But maybe you don't buy a gun there. Maybe you yeah. try and save the credits. If you're going on a suicide mission for a pick, you can just pick up the enemy's gun. Mm -hmm. And uh-oh, is Sunseri going to be able to be aware? Oh, Selzy goes down. So that wasn't the target at all. But Sunseri finds one, this shorty, and now a rifle flash out trying to swing off of it. And that's going to be, yeah, Sunseri's not not getting flashed mm -mm. around the corner it is not getting flashed around the corner and we are going to see curse with that ultimate coming out now i believe they did um kind of fix in this latest patch that even if cursed will go down the second ultimate whatever you want to call it blink ping ping the ping. second ping should come online still um it doesn't matter cursed Ooh. is not down and we are going to see clark come out with that viper's pit um what a what an amazing Ult that is there. Very hard to deal with, especially when you're in that numbers disadvantage. Clark is going to be holding it, but I'm not exactly sure if they're in the best position to be traded. If Clark goes down, that visibility is no longer going to be blocked, and that is going to be very, very tough there for Point Park Esports, who do now have that 4v1 numbers advantage all down here to Big Tonka. Clark goes down, and Sunseri, I was going to say, finds the last one, but it's going to be Creep that finds that last kill. Onto Big Tonka. Rounds are even. Rounds are even. And, you know, I think those are two very impactful kills by Big Tonka there at the end. I think if you're not going to win a round, as many enemies that you can kind of take down, very, very huge. Now, um, we are still in this first half of the first map. However, um, Point Park, I don't want to say they're struggling. It's a very close map. Uh, however, at 5v5, this is... Historically, what we've said has been their better map. Um, they really do need to win this one because they might struggle a little bit more there on Ascent. Yeah, you're definitely right there. And I kind of talked to Creep earlier and I said, Hey, Creep, I need a 2-0 if you're going to try and get to this postseason. And it was, a, it was an interesting thing that kind of happened. And it was a win is a win. It doesn't matter how close the game is because eventually it doesn't come down to round differential. And Clark and Sunseri finding their picks. Trey is all around and it's just going to be a bloodbath as Point Park will secure that round taking the lead. You know, that was a very, very quick round there. Um, Point Park, of course, did lose two of their members in that bloodbath, like you said. But very, very fast. It was just kills and kills and deaths and kills. Uh, but as you said, that does put Point Park University ahead. Um, ahead in rounds, not quite ahead when we look at that ultimate economy. One away from that Sanseri ult again, which remember we just saw a few rounds ago. Um, so that just speaks to Sanseri's ability to make space, get those orbs, and get some kills there. Um, but certainly not close to any other ones. And one thing I want to point out there is on the scoreboard, I don't know if you actually saw, but HCC only has one player that is positive. The rest are actually negative or even. And Point Park, they have a lot more kills. So I'm curious to see what is kind of maybe a factor there. But Sunseri finds one with the alt. But numbers favor 
of Highland Esports, the alt invested as well. So now all of a sudden, plant spot's going to be changed up. It might be going to triple now instead of default. And now, plans are kind of disrupted. This Viper Wall actually separates the team as opposed to separating the defenders. Mm -hmm. But hold up. Do you see Creep's positioning? Creep is very, very far up. And as this Viper Wall goes down, it's going to be, yep, the first Ooh. one to find is Creep, but gets traded. So now, 3v2, Seeker's probably going to get invested here if you want to definitely secure the round. But Point Park, they're certainly down but not out. And now Clark is going to be getting a little bit scared by these Seekers. It's going to be rough. Both players forced into U-Haul, and they now have no kind of visibility on the spike. That dog going to be concussing Clark, and all of a sudden, everyone's running. And now, will Clark be able to get the second? Yes! Yes, he does. And now, ooh, the shorty coming out from Tweezy just in time and barely. 0.56 on the clock. And Highland is going to secure that round. Yeah, no, that was a very, very close run. Of course, you did call that Seekers in the end, and that is exactly what Highland needed to do. Um, they invested two ultimates that round. That Brimstone ultimate was huge. That delayed the plant, gave them more time to rotate and start to get on site. I loved Creep's positioning there. Unfortunately, not able to find either one there in heaven, um, but did get the one very close. Now, I love the wraparound with the shorty. Almost was able to delay. Um, of, of, of course, unfortunately... Spike was half there, um, and that did give uh, that uh, Yoru Twizzy just enough time to get that diffuse off. It's we're back to six six. It's even once again. You know, I feel like we've been in a tie before <laughs> this map. You know, something tells me that this game is not a blowout. It's pretty close, and I'm interested to see if maybe this half, you know, the side swap mm -hmm. could be a big factor for either team. Maybe one is a lot more successful on this half than they were the previous. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to be interested to yeah. see that. Yeah, well now remember this was Point Park's map pick, so that does mean Highland Community College did get to pick which side they wanted to start on. Um, and typically you want to start with your more dominant side, so that might mean good things for Point Park here. Um, I, again, I, I we're going to have to wait till we see the first couple runs in the next half. Is it close? Um, is one team more dominant on either side? Who's to say? Um, if it's close, we could be going into OT. No kills coming out yet. We do see a lot of damage there, though, on creep. And this is a really big map in terms of the game today, in terms of the standings tomorrow. And, yeah, definitely going to be big in the scale of things. Mm -hmm. Clark now just kind of trying to hold down this site on site. And the Cypher, not with too much utility up, just a trip in Hookah. But that could be enough. But A site... Swapping over to there, there's three players, and it looks like this TP is going to come out very shortly. And yes, there it goes. Now all teams are going to be aware that the site A is going to be destination. Big Tonka is going to find Selzy out of position, and Twizzy is going to also find Creep. Time running low, but Bomb's going to get down. Suntory might be able to get past the turret, but now does get spotted. Clark now just trying to hide in the smoke. Maybe get a lucky right click, but Curse is going to find the first one, Slim. Finding now Sonsarian swings out. Clark not able to get the pick just quite yet. Hitting the reload, but the Yoru coming in from the spawn from heaven. And Cursed is not enough for not that Not enough. Round. Is able to get one, but not four. Uh, that's that's definitely, definitely tough, but it looks like they're not too, too worried here. Um, of course, definitely concerning. This is still a very close game, like we've been saying. Um, it, but I mean... Pistol rounds. It, it, it's a pistol round, you know? It is a pistol round, and Point Park has not been able to convert yeah. very many pistol rounds, at least uh, in my time watching. Um, those of you in chat who might have been following the Pioneers a little bit longer than I have might know something that I don't, but I definitely Ooh. think if they were able to convert more, um, it definitely would be easier for them. But beautiful, beautiful shots again coming out on both sides, 3v3, but quickly turns into a 2-1. They're all down to Clark here. Uh, it's hard when you're facing a Vandal on that second round. You know what's funny is we saw that exact same play from Highland on their defense on round two, or maybe it was round three. But we saw the exact same play come out where four players rushed, rushed A short. And now this bomb is going to get planted on A. So it is... A tough one for Clark as there is an alarm bot in 
mm-hmm. U-Haul. And now it's going to be a very, very kind of rough situation as mm-hmm. distance is in favor of the better guns in Highland's hands, as well as the mollies, which might be there for post-plant. The tap down to Ooh. spots the Yoru and spots the KJ. Now aware, but nothing you can do against a Vandal. Mm-hmm. Nice try um, there from, uh, from Clark there. Not able to do it in the end, but like we said, I, I even though Point Park has had trouble here on those pistol rounds against Highland Community College, at least these past two, um, I don't know what you want to call them, second rounds of the half. Um, I mean, definitely, definitely close, especially considering the gun disadvantage they've been in. Yeah, I mean, definitely. You know, like we talked about before, pistol rounds. Can Point Park be converting these? Is this the determining factor for their games? Is this a thing that they might need to work on? But either way, I don't know exactly which timeout was taken. I believe it's probably Point Park after going down 8-6. to six. Maybe they're taking a breather. Maybe they're thinking, okay, we got guns for the first time. Mm-hmm. Let's make sure we don't waste any of them. Try and get this as clean as possible. Mm-hmm. Now, we did say that one team might be dominant here as we switch halves. Of course, uh, yes, we have seen Highland Community College take those first two rounds of this half, but that doesn't mean they're dominant because, again, they won pistol rounds. Something historically, like we said, Point Park Pioneers have not always been able to to do so coming up into these next rounds where point park is able to get those rifles and then of course in a couple rounds when highland is also able to get those rifles going to be huge yeah so if you're point park here you definitely want to win this round if you're highland you want to get as many guns mm-hmm. down as possible and win the round i mean ideally right i mean ideally <laughs> that is correct now um as we are just kind of looking at the the kind of gun buys we have coming in here we of course do see point park esports with uh, those rifles, but I do believe I saw a Bucky come out from Highland, um, so we might see someone kind of just hiding. And I love that. Sk- oh, Ooh. I love that Sky Flash. Since there gets one, sees another, but it's not gonna get over peak too much Ooh. until he's ready. Three beautiful shots there from Sunseri. Can he get a fourth? All right, Sunseri, it- get oh. your eco frags. Okay, Sel- <laughs> Selzy okay, wants Selzy. one. Okay, Selzy. Selzy wants one, and I think Selzy deserves one. Uh, or two, or two after a setting Sunseri up there for the first couple. Um, of course, Sunseri is going to go down, but his best friend Selzy right there behind him to trade him out. Beautiful, beautiful shots by Sunseri. Now, I think one thing that we haven't touched on right just yet is the Sunseri effect. Right. And, you know, the Sunseri effect, it was 7 0. It was a dark time for Point Park Esports. It was Park a E-sports. dark time for Point Park Esports. And then Sunseri. Did Sunseri things and aced and aced Sunseri again? Now not quite an ace there, but beautiful shots and sometimes I think just the mentality of hey, remember we have Sunseri on our team with shots like that. Um, I mean, definitely, definitely something we want to see going forward. Now, not that I don't think any member of Point Park could have done that. Selzy there again is going to get its dismissive there. This is a huge round. Um, But of course, anytime you see beautiful shots, I love the movement there by Twizzy. Yeah, definitely. But it's interesting. Twizzy has a sheriff. There's no guns here for HCC. Oh, but there's the phantom pickup. Mm -hmm. So there must have been a play that was trying to get kind of underway there. And maybe nothing got online too fast as Selzy was with their opening pick. Now Twizzy looking for trying to get, you know, some sort of space on A. Trying to get on site, maybe an execute happening here, and Cursed with this beautiful camera. Mm-hmm. Sees two people shoot at this camera, and that's going to draw a rotate over from Sunseri. That is. Now, uh, Point Park does have that numbers advantage. Thanks to Selzy. Now, we did talk about the Sunseri effect, but we did not say anything about the Selzy effect, who did set up some of those shots there for Sunseri, and of course did get the opening pick this game. Oh, I wouldn't be surprised if Sunseri just pops this ultimate as soon as... <laughs> He hears anything from this enemy team, or as soon as one player is spotted, the ping's coming out. They're definitely aware. There comes the clone, and there comes that. Everything's going down, and as I called it, that's the result. And is it going to be finding any value? Curse finding the value first. I love saying that. Curse finding the value first. Sonseri finding one, but there's no time for Highland to plant this bomb. As this Brimstone is trying to save, maybe get some plant money down. And one HP is going to be very close, but is going to make it out with their life. And I believe the plant did go down there right at the very end. 
Um, so hopefully a little bit of money they're able to bring into this next round. Thanks to Lord Ayana Koji. And now everyone's on some, some big guns. Some big guns, and it's 8-8. Eight, eight. We're once again tied. We've been We're here before. We have been here many times this game. We're starting to see those rifle rounds all around come in. Of course, Big Tonka there on the Guardian. But when you have as beautiful shots as Big Tonka I've seen in the past couple rounds, um, going to be okay. Now, it looks like <laughs> I'm not sure if the wrong calls were made there at the beginning. It looks like Clark might be signaling. Uh, to rotate. Not sure if Clark hears anything, but uh, we saw a lot of Point Park uh, members there for uh, at the start over on the A site, and it does look like this is going to be a B hit. Of course, we're seeing Utility coming Ooh. out. Players from Point Park are kind of going to push off, especially as that Killjoy ultimate comes into play. And of course, they also have Twizzy with the ultimate there as well, going to spot out where some of those rotates are coming in from. Oh, and they spot the TP and spawn. So Sunseria is just going to play back and wait for that to happen. We're going to wait for this Yoru all TP. And Sunseria says, not in my house. Twizzy's going to get picked off. Slim now getting one on the Selzy Curse. Trades everywhere. Creep and Sunseria getting a little bit of the action. And Sunseria is going to finish it off with a nice little 3k. Now, uh, those of you who might not know what the Point Park Esports setup looks like, but uh, Ari and myself, as long as our beautiful producer, are in a separate room with a closed door. And even with the door closed, I can hear those uh, shots coming in from the players. I know last week, uh, Creep just went absolutely feral there for a yeah. second after a beautiful play. And I know you guys could hear that on stream. Not sure if you could hear anything this game yet. Um, but that was certainly a round for them to celebrate. That does put Point Park Esports up, and that does put Highland Esports on a light buy. Yeah, definitely. And I, I know that Creep was definitely, uh, what's the word? Not visible, but heard mm -hmm. on the broadcast because I did have the pleasure of editing that <laughs> game. So I did definitely hear it, and it will be on the recap video, which you can check out at PPU underscore esports and for those of you who are just joining us at this part in the game you see a very close score line if you want to know uh what happened the first couple rounds of course you can always check out our vod but later there will be a recap of this match as well so make sure you check out our socials i know uh right before the round started our little qr code popped up make sure you scan that and follow all of the point park university socials right and it's right there look at that beautiful look at that Big shout out to team it's Team uh, Ricky, who created the, those graphics and all the graphics mm -hmm. that you see here today. Team Ricky, responsible for all and of And also thanks to Nate, our beautiful producer, for hearing us and putting that up. But let's get back into the game. Clark is going to be sending out those mollies. It looks like uh, Highland Esports not able to get on site just yet. Of course, there's still 40 seconds and a half. Tons of time to get on site and take that bomb down. But it's still a 5v5. Oh, and this is going to be a little bit scary as... You know, Clark already down one molly, sees one in spawn, so now the second molly is going to go out, and that paint shell is going to do a lot of damage. That's a lot of damage, like that's we said before. That's a lot of damage. And now Clark trying to just hold down the site 20 seconds, and that's probably going to be the the destination for this hit. As Clark goes down the restaurant, Hookah Clark Ooh. finds a second one, cursed with two for himself. And all of a sudden, this is shambles for Highland Esports as the last one spotted Hookah. No time, and cursed cleans up the final kill of that round. 10-8 Point Park Esports. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, I love that rotation there from Selzy, who was able to heal off. We said that was a lot of damage from the paint shells, but doesn't matter. Um, Selzy came over, healed up uh, his teammates, and that does, uh, I think got four assists there from healing up um, some teammates. Or I think two of the assists were from healing Clark. Two assists, I think, were just chip damage. Doesn't matter in the end. Selzy there, as you can see on the board, 13 assists. Now, of course, uh, on the other side, Big Tonka has 12 assists um, on their side. But Point Park Esports is up by two rounds right now and feeling good with the, uh, those guns in their hands. So I don't know if you're actually noticing, but what Curse is doing is he's placing his trips on A and then putting his body on B. Mm -hmm. So you have kind of that Cypher you tell to scare them off of A, thinking that Cypher is going to be A. But in actuality, he is B with his camera. So you never know who is where on what site and when. But and is going to spot with the camera them coming out of garden there. Uh, not sure how many he spotted right off the bat. Ooh. But he's going to get one through that flash. But it doesn't matter. That flash was still going through. And Twizzy's going to uh, 
uh, trade him right out. It's a 4v4. It might be a retake if Lord Diana Koji can get this plant, and he or she will be able to get that plant. Ooh, dismissive finding one on the creep. So there goes creep. And now three ultimates online for Highland. You probably want to invest something if you're going to secure this round. Clark finding one. Sonseri finding another. And all of a sudden, it's just down to Clark. Oh. Clark finding Twizzy. And all of a sudden, it's a 1v1. But they know that he has alt. And all of a sudden, you're going to have to tap here. This alt's going to come out probably pretty shortly. And yep, there it is. That, honestly, if Clark sticks that there, that's the spike secured. Mm -hmm. But... All of a sudden now, Clark's going to just try and stick it, I think. And yeah, it's going to get caught in the back. The shot's whiffed, and it's halved. Is it possible that so Clark close. wins this oh, round? No. So, so close, Lord. Ayana Koji swings out at the last second there. Clark not able to get that diffuse off, but did everything he could. Honestly, he had to stick that because had he popped off, um, wasn't going to be able to, to get Lord Ayana Koji and still get that bomb off, and I think was making the right kind of call. Um, hopefully I can stick it out. Unfortunately, was not able to, um, but I think that was a better call rather than trying to get that Brimstone gun offline. Yeah, that's right. I mean, Brimstone also was killed to the bomb, so but, that, yeah, that gun is offline. That gun is still offline, um, and certainly that was very, very close, um, but timing is everything in this game, and, and I think being able to have that patience it plays off huge so well played there by highland community college all of a sudden five players a main and curse is gonna find the first going to be using this neural theft spots all the rest of the four and that's gonna draw the rotates out you know this is gonna be a hit chances are they're probably not tping but i could say that and cast a curse it and all of a sudden they go for the tp so there goes the molly in response to the bomb tap and all of a sudden everyone's kind of backing up they're a little scared even though the bomb isn't on default they want to do it, and all of a sudden, backing off. Sanseri kind of getting a little nervous now. There's the TP. You know, I called the caster curse. So did I call did the call? Did you cast a curse? Or it looks like Sanseri is posted there um, with... Operator, right? Yeah. What is... With a sniper. I don't know why I kept <laughs> wanting to say rifle, and I knew that wasn't... Um, with... Uh, Yes, the operator. So maybe it was a caster blessing. Ooh. After all, we're seeing uh, lots of utility though coming out here, and I, I you love to see it. Clark and a very like favorable. A re -hit. Ooh, Sanseri though finds one. Is the is the rocket going to be finding the second? No, but is the operator? The yes, operator it is. is. And that's for sure. Sanseri now three v two creep finding one, and all of a sudden it's just down to this raise, which they know is main, and creep finds the shot. Creep very happy with himself that round, and it's going to be 11 to 9 point Park Esports. Yeah, now we did touch on is this half going to be dominant one side or the other, and it still looks like it's pretty even. Of course, Point Park Esports are up here on their map pick, but it's still pretty close. Yeah, I mean, you you definitely have the question is it HCC having a fantastic game? Is it Point Park maybe having a slow day today? Either way, this game is close. Mm -hmm. This game is two rounds away, four point park for being secured and taking map one. Yep. I mean, very, very close. And like you said, I do want to point out that uh, point park esports do have more kills there on the board. So I think what a lot of this is coming down to is Highland esports uh, are electing to play a little bit more passive. And they are winning a lot of rounds based on timing, um, based on just positioning. Um, and, and, you know, that is something they shine Ooh. at. Beautiful, beautiful shot there from Clark. Uh, is going to try to put that Molly orb combo there to stall anyone else coming out of Hookah. And it is going to work. We see Big Tonka, and it's dismissive, kind of rotating off, but not rotating off site, going to try for that garden hit. Yeah, definitely. Numbers now in favor of Point Park. Highland with kind of the broken buy with only some sheriffs. And this is going to be really tough to secure. Do you... A, invest all of your alts and try and secure this round so that Point Park does not get to match point. Or do you B, try and do as much damage without investing any alts and just hope that you can bring this game to overtime? Well, you know, they do have three ultimates on the board. And I I think using ultimates on kind of that lighter buy is huge because it can help you secure a round. Now, when we look at the ultimates available... um. Not sure if these are the three necessarily that I would want to use together. Sanseri gets oh. two ob shots there. 
not going to find the third. It's Ooh. dismissive with two beautiful sheriff shots, but Clark going to clean it up in the end. Now, I don't know that I would have invested the ultimates that round, but in a different scenario, maybe different ultimates, I certainly would. Um, this is such a utility-based game, and of course, yes, they were on the lighter buy, but we we saw this last round. We've seen in previous rounds, they can do damage with sheriffs. That's right. I, I mean, that's a, a, a very, very strong gun, especially when you consider the amount of credits it takes to buy. Only 800. Um, so if you can hit your shots, not a bad gun to have there on a light round. We do see four ultimates, though, now. On the side of Highland Esports, it's match point. I wouldn't be surprised if we saw all four of them come out. Right, yeah, definitely. If you want to secure this round, ooh, and Sunseries, he has a toe. And but it's no, gonna miss. No, no, no toe shots today. Nobody's getting shot in the toes from that operator, shot. but maybe, maybe they will next peak. You know, you never know. Maybe they will next peak. Um, oh, the Viper's Pit invested by Clark. It's gonna be taking all of the space B main, and now the KJ Alt invested <gasps> on B, and Sunseries finding the first one. So all of a sudden, that player is down. That KJ Alt that was invested on B. Not really going to do anything, as I believe it either got taken down or didn't get any value. And now now it's looking a little bit rough for Highland, as Selzy finds one on it. It's dismissive, meaning that's another ultimate that is offline. Mm -hmm. All of a sudden, Sunseri gets peaked again, and that's the third. Not for Sunseri, but the third player going down for HCC. All of a sudden, two ultimates. You definitely probably want to invest these Sky Seekers. And now it's just it's rough. 5v1. You're talking about an ace clutch situation where the mm -hmm. spike is in the hands of the defenders. It's not going to be too well as Selzy finding some chip damage. And Sunseri looking up for this op and wants the kill for himself. There's the bird. Doesn't get flashed. Jiggles, flicks. Sunseri secures the round. That was a beautiful flick there by Sunseri. I know Sunseri knew exactly where Big Tonka was, but still a pretty incredible flick. Um... I mean, I definitely can't do that when an operator is in my hands. I'll be, I'll be quite honest. But that's why I'm up here and I'm not out there. Any flick that I do on the map is me getting jump scared that someone is behind yes. me. And if I hit them, it looks cool. Uh, other than that, yeah. that's it. As much as I would like to say that most of my kills are skill, I'm normally just luck. But uh, I think that we can all say that Point Park's kills there were not luck and they were skill. Point Park is going to take that first map. Although, I, that was a little bit close, especially for my liking. I would have thought they would have been a lot more dominant on that map. Now, of course, we don't know how Highland Community College plays on this, these other maps, but we do know it will be their map pick coming out. And again, I just think in at least the past two weeks when we've seen um, Point Park there on Bind, the round differentials between Bind and any other map has been a lot close. But, you know what? Let's not even think of that. You know, Point Park might stand a chance. We did say we wanted either team to have a 2-0 here. That's right. Um, but that being said, even though it was close on Vine, I, there's still a lot of great things. Um, Sunseri had a pretty, pretty amazing game. I mean, yeah, definitely when you look at... This game didn't have maybe as many flashy, flashy moments as we normally see. Maybe there wasn't, you know, an ace necessarily. But there definitely were a few multi-kills set up by Selzy here. Beautiful one for Sunseri. I believe a 3k and gets the first. It, I mean, it was just really great team play here. And you can see the trade, You like you usually say, they're not in a position to get traded. But this fight, everyone was in a position to get traded. Mm -hmm. Just like if Selzy goes down there, Sunseri's got the next kill. And same here. Sunseri goes down and sells exactly. against the kill. And you know what? That's what I would have liked to see a little bit more of them in some of those other rounds. But that is a beautiful example of what they could have been doing all along. And they did it there. I loved Selzy setting up the first couple shots there um, with that sky flash. Sunseri able to peek off of that and uh, get that Yoru there before Yoru could TP. Um, Notice the other two got flashed waited until they were in a good position and you know we couldn't see exactly where Selzy was but I know they were peeking together especially um as when that other one came out from uh probably pushing up a short um Selzy got the kill even though Sanseri was right there and I love that Selzy was able to trade Sanseri out right there I'm sure they were holding sort of a cross I think Selzy holding where Sanseri got killed from Sanseri holding that a short uh or watching anyone coming out from there, or just a rotate. Um, so beautiful teamwork. I loved seeing that. That wasn't Sunseri's only 3K, though. This map, Sunseri right. there at the end with the op, had a beautiful 3K. 
um, to finish out the game. We'll see it coming up right here. This is match point. And yeah, this final kill, the one to close out the map, <laughs> really, really important. And, you know, we talked about Sunsari. You know, Sunsari can have his overheat moments. And, you know, that those happen. Mm -hmm. It's fine. You know, if it's the last round, it's a 5v1. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. Have some Go fun. ahead, because if Sunsari does go down, we all know that Sunsari has lots of beautiful teammates behind there. Now, um... Of course, that was a 3K. We didn't see the other kills, but you did see that beautiful flick that we were talking about. It doesn't matter that Sunseri knew where they were. Um, of course, definitely helped, but that operator was not in a position to hit, um, who was a big Tonka there at the right. end, and just flicked right on. Um, still a beautiful shot, no matter the circumstances. Um, but I, I am pretty confident, had Sunseri gone down there, that uh, any one of his teammates could have just kind of cleaned that up there at the end. I think, you know, as much as we talk about Sonsera having some nice flashy mm -hmm. plays, everyone on the team had some nice plays. Mm -hmm. Clark, I know, had some nice mm -hmm. holds on B. Cypher, Curse, playing mm -hmm. some really nice setups yes. that you were seeing, playing delays, not a lot of utility, you said, from Creep. But I think I have to give the MVP of this map to Selzy. I was going to say the same exact thing. Yeah, I mean, those flashes were brilliant. Mm -hmm. I know we saw on a few rounds. I know we talked about that one that shot over the arch, mm -hmm. got the flash. That was beautiful. You know... And sometimes initiators can be a little bit mis not misrepresentative, but mm -hmm. un un unsung heroes, if you will. Mm -hmm. You know. Yeah, I I mean everyone loves to talk about a player like Sunseri who absolutely was doing his job, and I I don't mean to undermine Sunseri, and we've seen Sunseri just pretty consistent in his shots and his ability to create that space. Um, but that is his job as a duelist is to go in there and get kills. Um, but Selzy. I mean, when we talk about using utility, flashes on point, um, not only just uh, using that utility, but having the shots to back those up. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of first picks there from Selzy we saw that kind of um, set the tone for the round, um, giving Point Park that, that man advantage early on. Um, we also saw Selzy um, with some very, very crucial heals and just being able to rotate. And, and I know... Um, I wouldn't say that healing is, is a role. I know sometimes, you know, you get in your rank team and we need a healer. You do not need a healer. Um, you need to make sure you have everything else covered. But Sky's ability to heal is so, so broken. Yeah. So if you have a good Sky player who's able to, um, you know, listen to your IGL, especially when you have such a great IGL like Creep, uh, get those rotates in, um, heal off your teammates. I mean, we saw that... Uh, that heal there on Clark there on, what was it, the B site, um, mm -hmm. uh, and on Cursed. Um, but yeah, no, I think when we talk about a standout player today, or at least in this first map, has to be Selzy. Yeah, and you can definitely tell that Point Park, you know, we talked about this game being very, very close. I believe it was tied up until 9-9, nine, nine, mm -hmm. right? And so you see Point Park near the end there kind of heated up a little bit. They said, hold up, this is our map pick. Mm -hmm. We got to get some rounds here, and we want to get mm -hmm. to the next map. Now, you know, and that is what I think we've seen in the past couple of maps, even when uh, they were able to win against UMF. Now, I know they had a very dominant game there on Bind, but a lot of times I do, even even when they're able to win rounds, I do think they take a couple rounds to kind of warm up and get into the groove. Um, certainly last week against Converse University, took them seven rounds to start converting wins, and it took a Sunseri ace to do that. Um, and then they started looking a lot more comfortable. I think last week on Bind was very winnable against Converse had they found that groove a little faster. Um, so certainly I think they found that groove, which might mean good things for them coming into Ascent. Yeah, you're definitely right. I mean, I know, I think maybe, I, I, I'm curious to see what the stats say, but I think Point Park might have kind of a better game, I guess, a better mm -hmm. half. On defense, because we've noticed kind of the 7-0 crept up on, on their attack side, but they kind of brought the game back on defense. And the same with this mm -hmm. game. You know, it was very, very close until they got to defense. They yeah, figured them out. That's and true. Boom. So I'm curious you know, what that is. Yeah, there. is that their dominant side? Um, does it take them a while to get comfortable and into the groove? It's, it's hard to say because this has been their map pick. So they have not been choosing sides, and they have been ending kind of on that defensive half. Um, now, one thing that was a little bit different this week than we saw kind of before on Bind is that uh, Highland Community College actually did have a Sentinel with that KJ. That's right. Um, 
in the past, we thought that would have been good for them not having to worry about a sentinel. We had players like Sanseri do a lot of lurks and creeps. Um, not able to do that as much this time. Uh, we saw there, uh, there was that round where, uh, their Killjoy, Slim, uh, put that alarm bot in U-Haul, and it mm. was down to Clark. Had Clark had better timing, Clark would have been able to wrap around, and I think it won, and at least make it into a 1-1. One, one. Maybe recover a gun there, um, and so not able to do that was forced to keep that pistol. Um, yeah. A, a, you know, the, the turret, we saw some utility with the turret, right. not just in doing chip damage, but kind of signaling where some people are. So um, definitely, definitely harder to play against a Sentinel than no Sentinel. But in the end, Point Park was able to win this first map here on Bind. Yeah, definitely. The difference between kind of Cypher and KJ, KJ's more, oh, hey guys, they're here. Cypher's more, oh, you want to hit my site? <laughs> That's not happening. So it's cool to see how both teams utilized their different Sentinels and managed to kind of get their play style mm -hmm. off of their Sentinel. I mean, you know, you have the Sky on both teams, you have the Brimstone on both teams. So every, everything's kind of similar for that aspect. But definitely, I think the big difference in that game could have been the Sentinel and how they played around it. Certainly, certainly. Uh, especially when you're talking about different team comps. Um, but... You know, not something that we have to worry about going into Ascent um, because there is kind of that more established meta on Ascent. Now, that does not, I, I don't know um, what Highland's uh, team composition is on Ascent, and I don't think I've had the pleasure, at least, of casting Point Park on Ascent. I know I've seen them play, but I don't quite remember what the team comp is either. If it's um, meta or not, you might be able to touch on if it's typical or not. I mean, I, I'm going to be honest, I zoned out for a second. <laughs> I was reading notes from our director, Nate, and I heard that the round differential was within five. But is that round differential or is that map differential? I think that's round differential. Because round differential doesn't really matter in the grand scheme of things. So, you know, we'll, give, we'll keep you guys updated. I will do a check for you as we get into this next game on Ascent. Kai? Well, you know, I think just touching back on that round differential would only come into play. In, it, well, no, it wouldn't because all teams face each other in this group stage, actually. That's correct. It's only down yes. to map differential, and then it goes to no-shows slash forfeits, and then it goes to a lovely, lovely coin flip. So, yeah, it, it's definitely a close, you know, scene postseason, no matter what happens here. I'm just trying to get an update for you guys on what the score looks like for UMF versus Converse. Right. Uh, is their first map in yet? I am Select checking Ari's. on that. Well, there's, while there's Ari, a lot of games happening. There are a lot of games. Well, while Ari checks on that for us, um, now we have not seen Selzy lock in, but if Selzy does lock in, it looks like we will be seeing mirror comps. Again, this is Ascent, kind of the bread and butter of Valor. I think almost in a way, a lot of times you can kind of tell, I don't want to say who's the better team, but it really just comes down to kind of a little bit more mechanics when you see these mirror comps, when you see a map like Ascent that you see a lot in pro play, um, teams uh, practice this map like crazy, and you kind of know what to expect. So unlike um, some of these other maps where, where you may have, I don't want to say better strats, of course you still need to work on your strategies, you still need to go do um, some server work with your team, but uh, definitely, definitely kind of a more practice map now this is highland esports pick um i don't know and and some of you at home might know better i don't know if this is their pick because this is highland's best map i don't know if this is a pick because they think point park isn't as strong on this map um you know we'll see as we go into this map and so you know quick little info update converse versus um flint didn't see any score there so it could be a close game not entirely sure how the score but we will keep you posted as we head into this ascent game now selzy on sova as we typically see on ascent probably going to be utilizing as we say the odin with the paper walls that are on ascent and gonna be seeing a little bit of a roll swap here twizzy was on the yoru now on the sova so from duelist to initiator that is going to be a decent size change 
it is going to be a decent size, sized change. Now, we will have to see, do these it, specific players play differently now that they're given a different role? Um, however, like we said, these are mirror comps, so I think sometimes that goes into who is the best on specific agents we need to fill this comp. Shots are coming out Ooh. left and right. Lord Ayana Koji getting some nice shots. And yeah, definitely players going down right now. Point Park in favor of, you know, not really the numbers, that's for sure. And so Sonseri finds the one as the blind. Ooh, flicks all around. Selzy finding two on the lane, and all of a sudden it's a 2v2. Can Sonseri and Selzy close this one out? Is the second Molly going to come out? No. So now it's a double peek. Are they aware? They see the KJ on box, and they see both players. Selzy finds one, but it's the 4K from, I believe it was Lord. Uh, that was Lord Diana Koji there on that KO. Creepy. Now, one. I don't know if you guys heard that. I, I think, I think you so. might have been able to, but you definitely saw that on Creep's face. Sometimes it's just nice to kind of get all of that out um, so that way you can kind of focus more on the game. You don't have to do that in game. Now, Highland Esports did get another pistol run on the board. Yeah. This is a third against Point Park. Now, was that a product of Lord Diana Koji just having a great pistol round? Was it that Point Park isn't as good on pistol round? Um, or is Highland just really good on pistol round? It could be any of those three things. Either way, Point Park, they need to convert those pistol rounds because those are going to be big, but they're not aware of the four people that are pushed up. And Sun Seri is good for three before Twizzy takes down three and all of a sudden it's a 2v2. So, a round that didn't seem close off of the rip because of Sonseri, all of a sudden is now even. And it's actually technically in favor of Highland with those guns. Mm -hmm. And all of, yeah, it's, it's, it's a rough setup here. You know, you, you do have information, I guess, on in favor of Point Park, but Highland with those guns and the beautiful only Ares skin for Twizzy. You know, Point Park has not been able to win a pistol round yet, but they're coming so close here on these second pistol rounds when they have the gun disadvantage. Um, I almost wonder if they were able to play like that that first round. Right. I don't know if they have a mental block maybe against pistol rounds, but had they been able to kind of get land some of those shots that first round, um, I definitely think that we could have seen some turnaround. So that's definitely something I'm hoping for the Pioneers coming into the next half is... I would like to see one pistol round. Yeah. This today. I would from like to Point see. Park. Yeah, the last pistol round go the way the way of Point Park. Well, hopefully for <laughs> the pioneers, it's the last True. pistol round. But of course, if Highland Esports wins this one, we will be going on to map three, which is split. I don't know. For me, Ascent just always feel like it's the tiebreaker map, and so all of a sudden, Slim finding that pick, and it's a one v one, an omen battle for the ages, and the shots not gonna land. Slim finding Clark there, and that is the round two for Highland. Um, but I, you know what I loved? Curse with that Guardian through the box there. Mm. Um, I'm a big fan of the Guardian. I'm a big fan of the Guardian too. And there's something about Guardian shots hitting that just feels so, so nice. So an update for you here today. UTD did lose their game against Kennesaw. They either forfeited or something didn't happen there, but UTD did not play against Kennesaw, meaning Kennesaw wins. And that's big because now UTD is halfway to where either of these teams need them to be. UTD needs to technically lose the next game that they play next week if either of these teams want to make the play postseason. Now, can you remind us who UTD will be facing next week? Converse. That's ex that's that's what I thought. Um, who? Again, we don't know what's going on with UMF Converse right now, but Converse has been undefeated thus far. And just based off the Pioneer UMF game we saw, I I would not be surprised um, if it's a, a pretty quick game there for UMF Converse. Yeah, and talk about big game, but big shots coming out from Point Park. Is There's four on the side of Point Park, three for Clark, and now all of a sudden it's just logs. Logs, that's it. That's the final player. Twizzy hiding in logs, finally spotted, and can Clark get this 4K? Yes, he can. The Molly coming out from, I believe, Creep to push them yep, out of the position. Creep on that KO. Now, that was a clocked 4K.
but yeah, not clip. quite what we need. We need a Clark Ace. So it's those... okay. Take your time. We'll get the ace next. We'll time. get the ace. Everyone in chat, if you think Clark is gonna ace this game, give us a, give us a Clark Ace. Give, give us, us a, a Clark Ace. Clark Ace. I'll take a Clark Ace. I'll take a Clark Ace. You want one or two? I want two. Yeah. I'm gonna start with one, and then we'll get to two. I want one right now. Okay. I okay. want two today. That, okay, that's fair. I, li I like that. And Sonseri, dashing in. I like the play, but the shots don't find their target as Lord Ayanokoji going to be taking that one. Selzy now trying to slip into wind here because maybe there might be kind of a caught off guard positioning as this bomb most likely goes down on A site here. Point Park going to be playing retake. And Clark shooting the knife, not letting how many players know our heaven. And Selzy finds that timing. And that's what we were talking about. Wine, that lurk is going to be huge. All of a sudden, bomb is down. And there's 4v3 in favor of Highland. Lord planting the bomb here. And Tweezy lurking up of cats. And that's going to be the turning factor for that round is Highland's going to take it 3-1. to one. Now that was a pretty important round because I believe that was the fourth yep. round there. Um, which is when you really start to see... Of course, other than the pistol round where everyone has the same guns, similar guns from both sides. Um, does look like Pioneers are almost going to all have rifles here, except for Clark with that Sheriff, which, you know, I'm not counting out. I've seen a lot of nice Sheriff shots today. That's true. I, you know, I would love a Sheriff Ace from anyone on this map. I, I'm, good, I'm down for some good content. I'm down for some good Sheriff Ace content. Um... This is backtracking a little bit. We did say we would keep you updated on the UMF Converse game, but I do remember last week Converse University needed to play on Thursday against the Pioneers. Yeah. Not sure if that was just a, a one-week thing or if that's like a kind of set-in-stone thing. So i um, not sure if that game will be tomorrow. So definitely make sure you keep up with the Nace Star League to check that out. But Highland Esports already down numbers advantage, and we do see Sunseri come out with those Jet Knives going to be hard in a 4v5 but bomb is down Ooh, i like that flash play there the molly going to not go out and sunseri is going to fall molly's out now but that's cleaned up by creep as he finds three on the round three to two point park and this is basically what we saw on the first map it's kind of the same rounds that went in favor of these teams no i am not surprised that this seems kind of a little bit closer um especially given that map we saw in bind how close it really was. Um, I, I think I love what I really love seeing is is mirror comps. I mm. love seeing that because it comes down to uh, it comes down to abilities. It comes down to shots. And really, the uh, Highland Community College and Point Park Esports are two very good teams, very similar teams. Um, and I think we might have a game on our hands here. Yes, definitely. I'm interested to see how Highland implements their alts this round because chances are those alts are going to be coming out most likely in this one because if Point Park secures the round like Sunseri can secure the kill on the Lord and Okoji, it's going to be kind of shambles for their economy. The blind goes out, so Clark's a little bit blind. He can't see and hopefully is going to be able to stay on site. Selzy now breaking the door. It's dismissive finding up the site. And that's a little bit rough for Point Park as now they're in a 3v4 scenario. This one is spotted by stairs. Oh, is going to spot the one right outside the market there. Ooh. And ooh, beautiful shots there by Sunseri. Helped, of course, by Selzy. I think Selzy and Sunseri are a, a nice little duo there. Sunselzy? Sun 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 I like that. I like that too. It was an accident, but definitely think it's something that could catch on. Sunseri going to find that pick on Big Tonka and before dying there too that utility Ooh, this is gonna be close finding the fourth and sunseri now finding the 1v1 and it's an ace that's an ace for sunseri that is a sunseri ace and we all know last week what that meant point park's activated now point park is activated now look at that you can see that on their faces clark's tired of sunseri getting aces clark is tired clark goes man i had a 4k why did not get that ace who's and stealing my ace? i don't know if you noticed there but there was actually a bait. The KJ was the bait for Sanseri because, you know, it's Sanseri. And you want to let Sanseri. him get the final kill. You do want to let him get the final kill. Of course, if Sanseri wasn't able to get that final kill, um, I definitely like that. That was a little bit dicey, though, there. Mm -hmm. Because I would have liked to see 
Sunseri and Curse kind of pushing together because by the time Curse kind of jumped out there, and of course, um, uh, and of course, who is it on on the Sova Twizzy? Twizzy was able to get that kill. Um, was able to turn around and spot Sunseri. Of course, Sunseri is just good at this game. Is yeah. just good at clicking heads. Going to clean it up in the end, but had they pushed together. It just would have been a nice cleaner cross, I think. Well, you never know. There could be a collat. There could be some spam, a lucky spray transfer. So you never know. And speaking of lucky shots, Ooh. that's not going to be luck. That's a pretty skilled shot for dismissive. And Clark not exactly going to clear his left. Lord Diana Koji finding one on site as well. And it's a 3v2. We've seen this before. Can Selzy pick up this kill on Heaven? Or is the Sova going to drop to... Ooh, jumps to Jenny. Makes the jump. That's a pretty tough jump to make. <laughs> I, I, I always am happy when I make when I make that jump, and all of a sudden Creep gets that one. It's gonna be even up two versus two. Creep with the ultimate, so could be investing it. Finds one hell. Chances are the other one's Jenny. Oh, and the spam is it big enough? It's not big enough to do any sort of damage quite yet. And that shock dart could be big. And Twizzy swinging out, finding Creep. Selzy now in a one v two scenario. Trying to find this first one, and it's not going to be successful. Highland going to take the round. Four to three, right? Four to three, I believe. Of course, we will see right as we get into the game. But I, uh, well, three, four, if you're uh, here for the Pioneers. Um, again, it's just so much back and forth. Yeah. And I think a lot of what that comes down to, uh, three, four versus four, three, is really that pistol round. Yep. And yeah, it's going to be a common theme that I hope we hope that on the Point Park broadcast, we don't have to say every single week that Point Park loses another pistol round because I would like to see them win one for a change. I would like to see them win one. And I know they can. I know they have it in them. They're coming really close on these second pistol rounds. Ooh, Sunseri is kind of in a tough situation, but is going to be able to get out. Unfortunately, Selzy is not, though, as Selzy goes down first. Sunzeri investing these knives, so this round is certainly turnable. And like you said, using these kind of guns, or these ultimates on these eco rounds are very, very big, as you can do a lot of damage, but cursed, unaware of how close the enemy team is to him, and he's going to go down. Clark not finding the shots right away. Oh, and that TP is going to be right under the open, but not going to go down just yet. Could get a pick, but no, Twizzy finds the wall bang. Onto Clark. Creep finding one onto Slim. Finding, two. finding a second onto Dismissive. And it's still winnable. It's just very, very hard to win a 1v3 with 20 HP and a Stinger. I, not just a Stinger anymore. It's going to be upgraded to a Vandal. That's still only 20 HP in a 1v3. If you're if you're Highland, though, yeah. They're, they're realizing, hey, we can just go A. Eh? Creep's 1 mm -hmm. HP. Uh, and unfortunately there for Creep, they were able to pick Ooh. up the bomb, but what a beautiful shot there on Twizzy. Creep looking for his ace this time. You can see the concentration on his face. He was going okay. skin shopping a little bit. He, he wanted the blue vandal instead of the, the gold one. I, you know, I don't blame him. Oh, I don't think he's I like that blue one. <gasps> oh. It's close. It had a... It was close. That was close. That it was. was. That was close. You know, so you saw the crosshair kind of just adjust as the shot was landing from Lord. Mm -hmm. So, you know, big round if you're Highland. Definitely want to force Point Park off of... I mean, that was an eco buy for them. So, like guns, yeah. that was a lot of damage that Point Park did. So, you, you got to be happy with how that round kind of turned out. If you're a Pioneer fan you, or you're a Pioneer player, you definitely have to be happy where how that turned out. Again, I know I say this every time. Any damage is good damage. Any damage is good Any damage. Any damage is good damage. Now, of course, winning a round is definitely what you want to do. Um, but getting so many offline, beautiful shots there by Creep. Didn't have any sort of backup to help him out. But hey, if, if you're 1v3 on a site with a stinger, I will gladly take that. Ooh, and the flash lineups Ooh. by Sunseri. Creep going to go down. Sunseri not going to find the pick. So all is lost kind of from that fight. And it's going to be looking a little bleak for Point Park here, but... It is able to be turned as if Clark finds the shots, but no, not quite yet. Is the spam going to come through through the smoke? Yes, it does. It tags Clark, but no kills anyway. Two ultimates online for both teams, for their remaining players, that is, as we're going to try and see the rest of the round play out. Now, if Highland goes to Point Park site, we could see kind of that KJ ultimate to kind of delay that plant and either force a rotate 
or at least um, allow the pioneers to rotate over to that site if it's going to be a rehit because it looks like there's only about 30 seconds, a little over 30 seconds left in the half. Oh, and Sonseri goes down. But Curse got scanned by the knife, so they probably think he's Boathouse, except for the fact that they just cleared it with the Omen. So, never mind. They don't think that Cursed is Boathouse. You know, Selzy, I think he might have used that dart a little bit too early there, as now that you can't have a, really an opportunity for a wall mm -hmm. bang. And that, that KO ult is big from HTC. That's huge, because you know what I think could have been a good alternate play here. It would have been Curse coming out with that ultimate. Um, Ooh, Ooh. That was a flawless Whoa. retake, but now it's all up to Twizzy. And Twizzy goes down, Cursed, with some nice shots there. I love the communication that Point Park did mm -hmm. there. I don't know if you could tell, but on stairs, Creep was talking, saying, I'm holding your right. Selzy said, all right, I got your left. And they walked up. The one peaked. The other didn't waver. And they got the kills that they wanted. The shots landed. And that was beautiful gameplay by Point Park University. And that's exactly what you need to do. Um, and hopefully something that we can see a little bit more coming from them. We do see a timeout coming out now. Probably looking to kind of recap what just happened it i mean it's close what is it four or five now Some, something around something there something like that again still anyone's game um but i love that play there by point park you could just tell the communication was there um and the ability to play off of each other like they did uh, if they can do that a, a couple more rounds they might be able to come out dominant this half and then hopefully um the next half because remember this is point park's a pick as as far as which side they're on that defensive side right yes you know definitely on a map like ascent you want to get as many rounds as you can on that defense because you have that killjoy attacking with a killjoy not exactly the easiest now me personally i know some lineups because i'm weird but typically it's a lot harder with a sentinel on defense yes you can hold your flank but that's one person you doesn't really have a lot of util to get you onto that site yeah, uh, that is true. However, when you have um, that kind of synergy as a team, if you can kind of keep most of your teammates online, you do have that other um, utility to help you get on site. And remember, this is a mirror lineup. So everything that you have, this team has as well. Um, right. If they can do it, then mm -hmm. so can we. That's the mentality mm -hmm. that these teams must be having right now as everyone's going to play a little slow this round and just kind of wait for some noise. See what's going on today. How's your day been? My day's been pretty good. How's your day been? Honestly, uneventful. Unev you know what? Mine too. I was just waiting for this. Yeah. Waiting for some Valorant. I love I love Valorant. You know, this morning I woke up and wanted to play Valorant, but I'm glad I didn't <laughs> uh, because this game is so much more exciting and eventful than any of my games would have been. And boy, do we have a match in our hands. Uh, part of me uh, does want the Pioneers to close this up 2-0, like we said uh, either team should. Another part of me is excited to see the drama Ooh. that might come if we do go to a third map, but that scan there by Selzy is going to spot three. Um, knows where some of those Highland esports players are. It looks like they are electing to take this to that A site. And this is something that Point Park does a lot on their That's offense. Good. They always like to go mid to cat to A. Is Point Park going to know how to counter their strat that they like to do so much? And we're about to find out as they are hitting the cursed setup. The KJ ult going to come out. And I like that as I don't believe that's 100% wall bangable as someone's definitely going to get detained and or an ult has to get invested just like that. The Sova ult destroys that Killjoy ultimate and that's going to be a valuable trade. Especially if the bomb is down. Cursed finding one. It's dismissive. Cursed finding two. Cursed having a big round. This KJ ultimate and woo, that was that was really good team play there. Like you said before, trades are huge. And if you are in a position that you can get traded in, that's going to help you out for a while. That is going to help you out for a while. And, and I love that ultimate coming out there from Cursed. That's exactly how KJ should be played on Ascent. Um, of course, we also see, you know, a lot of those mollies on bomb on the attacking site. But, uh, yeah, beautiful round. Um... What what does that bring the score now? I think it's 5-5. Five, five. Five, Is five. that another even game? We've been here before. 
I'll, I'll, you know what? I will take a close game because as I said before, it doesn't matter how close the game is until you come out on top because that's what matters. Now, that, cursed. Oh, oh, yeah. I was going to say that <laughs> is exactly what matters. Um, but yeah, you're right. The round has started still 5v5 and it looks like this might be an A hit. Yeah, definitely going to be very heavy on A as all five players are towards that. And this didn't really go well for them last time. Let's see if it goes a little bit better on this. But Selzy being an absolute monster, Clark being an absolute demon. It's dismissive finding it their few though. And will this be the round secured four point park as they do have the spike? It's dismissive on one HP, but Clark getting a nice pick. Or sorry, Clark getting picked by a nice shot, and yeah, Creep's gonna secure the round though. Creep is gonna secure the round, and that does mean Point Park is on top. Now this is the last round before we swap sides. Is this the first round that they've taken the lead on both maps? I could be wrong, but I'm curious if that is that. Because I know they took the lead at around 6-5 last time as well. I think they did as well. Um. I don't know. I think you might be correct. I, I think what's really fun is when Ari and I are up here, there's a lot of, like, not very common stats that we, yeah. like, wonder. And I think we need to do a better job uh, kind of, like, scorekeeping. Beautiful shot there by Sanseri, though. And it's going to get another one. Knows exactly where Bomb is. Sanseri has uh, that jet dash activated. And it's going to find <laughs> the third. Okay, Sanseri. We, we thought you activated earlier. But it's actually right now in Clark going to be landing the shots onto the first, the spam coming out. So everyone knows where this last player is. Was a main, was a main is where is what Clark is mm -hmm. saying right now. And now Twizzy in a rough position to try and close this round out as it's a 1v5. It is and a 1v5. 1v5s are a little tough. 1v5s are very tough. Uh, Twizzy could ace here. Twizzy could ace we here. We have seen an ace on this map already. but The question I... is, is Twiz Twizzy Sanseri? Is Twizzy Sunseri? <laughs> Find out next. Find out next. With 40 seconds in, just looking at positioning, it does not look like Twizzy is going to be Sunseri. Uh, of course, it's getting a little bit pinched there. Everyone knows exactly where Twizzy is. Ooh. And Sunseri going to get that kill there in the end. You know, the flawless, it may not matter because it's the end of the half, but it's certainly a nice confidence booster saying, hey, we didn't lose anybody last round. And maybe that's the confident boost they need coming into this next pistol round. Could this be the first Point Park pistol oh. round of at least the last, what, three weeks? Maybe they had one in there. Uh, maybe. I think they might have had one. I don't know. At least of the day. Things that we have to check for next week. Write Things that down that on we, the list. Things that we have to check. How many pistol rounds does Point Park have? None today yet, but that could change right here. Yeah, definitely. I mean, you know, coming into this next half, we were saying that maybe Point Park had a stronger defense side. So now it's about their attack. Can they convert these rounds on attack? And can they pop off like they did on defense? Is this going to be a tall task for them? Or are they just going to take this hand, like in, easily? I mean, it is hard now. If they are able to play like they did some of those rounds last half, I think it's good. Cursed uh, and whose jet, it's dismissive, I believe, both very, very low right there. Um, trades are coming out. It's a 4v4. Remember, though, um, Point Park did choose their half first. That's a 3v3. Right. I think everyone's just wondering, is this going to be the first Point Park pistol run? I know I'm wondering. Celsi getting saved there by the door, but doesn't matter. Lord Diana Koji going to find Celsi anyway. The and that's no. not the first Point Park Pistol run on the board, but that is the fourth Highland Community College pistol run of the day. Now, I do have some news for you. Converse did take the win against UM Flint. For the series of four map one. Map two. Their games are over. So, UM Flint, they got their loss, and now they need to win. Oh, no. I lied. Well, no, oh, no, yes. No. UM Flint needs to win, and Dallas needs to lose, and Point Park, or Highland, needs to win. And well, yes. so postseason hopes for these teams are still alive as of this week. Mm -hmm. So whoever comes out of victorious, one of these teams will be eliminated from postseason contention. The other will have higher hopes than they mm -hmm. did yesterday. 
Now remember, it will all kind of come down to that UT Dallas game against Converse next week, but Converse have not lost a single game this entire series. So I don't want to speculate too much, but I think we should expect another Converse win there, and it should kind of come down to this week and next week still. That's right. And also interesting fact, Converse 2 owed, which means that's big for tiebreakers and map differential mm -hmm. if you are one of these teams. You definitely want UM Flint to lose by as many maps as possible, which is two. Which is two. Now, uh, speaking of winning 2 0, has Converse lost a single map this entire group stage? I, I think one. I think one, and it was, I think, to UT Dallas. I don't quote me on that one. I'm kind of guessing. But. Wizzy, not guessing. No, guess they it. haven't played UT Dallas yet. Don't they play next week? You're right. I'm a liar. But maybe they will lose one map. Maybe they will lose maybe one Maybe I have the script UT and I read the wrong one. Well, as you all know, our math skills have been off. And <laughs> so have our reading comprehension skills as we keep yeah. getting the strip script in a... I don't know what we do with it, but certainly not read it and comprehend it. Time is running out here, though. Ouch. All down here to Selzy. Oh. Ooh, and a nice shot. Not going to have enough time get some kills. to get Spike, but is going to grab a Bucky and a Sheriff. Maybe Keep the Spectre. That. Yeah, well, I mean, there's only so much you can ask for on that round. There's only so much you can ask for on that round. And again, that's another... Uh, no, that one wasn't as close as some of these second pistol rounds that we've seen from Point Park in the past, but... Yeah. I think one thing Point Park really needs to work on is their ability to win that first pistol round because they're losing two rounds at the beginning of every half. Right here. Okay, I had to fact check myself. You are correct. Converse has not lost a single map in this NACE Star League so far, which is, which is ridiculous. It shows how good Converse is. And maybe the closest one was to Point Park on that 13-10 on bind. Yeah, I think, um, I do remember I had looked at some of their stats. I don't think anyone else had come 13-10. I think there might have been one 13-9. Look at all these shots coming through, though. Point Park uh, is down one player, but Highland Esports are down three. And Plant is going to come down here on this A site. Sun Seri's doing everything this round. Got the three kills, got the plant. What else is he going to do this round? But you know what? Maybe that's exactly what Point Park Esports needs because as we've seen in the past, you give Sun Seri oh, a round and no. then you feel good. That's a 4K from Sun Seri. Could we see another Sun Seri ace? Is this going to be two in one game just like we need Clark to do? But we'll take it from Sun Seri either way. Is Sun Seri going to be able to get this final pick? Or is, or is the Killjoy going to save? Because... That honestly is a smarter decision, right? You know what? If I'm Big Tonka, I don't think I want Sunseri to ace again. There's just something mentally about an ace that feels so much worse than just getting killed or losing a round. But it doesn't look like it's going to matter. Players not by each other. And Big Tonka is going to die to the spike. Oh, right. That was a bonus mm -hmm. round four. That though. was a bonus, so was not going to save. Uh, unless they had been able to find, of course, uh, that one rifle that was left behind um you know that was nice not getting spotted by another player not giving them the ability to kind of charge up those ultimate points right but, yes uh, yeah it did go down to the spike and is going to buy up next now just gonna plug it one more time everybody scan that qr code on stream right now make sure you check us out on socials point park esports we got a tiktok now we do have a tiktok i believe now. we also have a facebook now I believe we have Facebook, TikTok, Instagram, Twitter. And unfortunately, not Sunseri in mm -hmm. this round. <laughs> we don't have Sunseri in this round, but we do have the rest of the team. Selsey going to come out with those shock darts. Spike is now down. I'm curious to see, you know, how Highland kind of addresses this one. There's no alts. Common post plant positions are kind of where these point park players are and creeps trying to find one, finds one and cursed gets another before creep gets traded. So that's really, really big, as now these help players don't have to worry for a long time. Cursed just going to be playing outside of the smoke, trying to play for the stall. Selzy finding one with a spam. That's going to be beautiful, as there's a pistol now for Twizzy. Oh. And the right clicks are landing. So now it's a 1v1. But Cursed, I don't think 
that Highland has enough time, and that is correct. Curse knows that, and that's going to be the round win for Point Park. That is the round win. Yeah, it's yep. it's it seems like you know Point Park has found their footing, but then again, I think we saw this before where. Highland took the first two rounds, Point Park came back, took the next two, and I think this is kind of the same map sequence that we saw before. I'm curious to see, as I am as I edit this, this video here for the recap, I want to put the two timelines together Time for the two maps and see if those rounds are similar or the same, because they very well could be. They very well could be. Now, again, we have said this, but the difference here is who is picking which side. Um, we did say... Now, we were, I think, mostly talking about Bind, but just in general, is defense a stronger half? But, I mean, it looks like Ooh. they might be doing a little bit better here on off offense. There's just trades and trades. But now, all down to Big Tonka, and Big Tonka is yeah. not able to do it. Round secured for Point Park. Sheriff buys for Highland. You know, you kind of expect that. Mm -hmm. Decent amount of damage. But... If you're trying to come back in this game, you know, you're down three rounds right now. Mm -hmm. It's going to be a little bit tough to come back from that deficit. I know we saw this kind of last game. You know, this game has been close pretty often. So the chances that there's a comeback are not, you know, crazy low, crazy high. Mm -hmm. We got a game on our hands. We do have a game on our hands. Again, two very close teams. Now, I believe 10-7, this is the largest round differential at this point in the game we've seen on either map. Uh oh, Ooh, that's uh, a little bit rough as Slim finding that little smoke pick on just uh, Sanseri completely stopping the push because, you know, if you lose somebody like Sanseri, you're going to be a little bit worried, you know, but Clark has no fear. Clark is here. Clark is here, and Clark is going to get that spike planted uh, Point Park are in a low numbers advantage here, but they do have bomb. A little bit of bad positioning and not going to be able to finish it up in the end. Uh, Highland Esports is going to take this round pretty cleanly. Yeah, I mean, that's, you know, if, if you're them, that's what you want to see, 100%. If you're a Highland Esports player, Highland Esports fan, or even just a casual enjoyer rooting for Highland Esports, you definitely want to see them taking some wins, making this a close game, and getting those guns back on their side. Mm -hmm. Now, we did not quite see overtime there on Bind, but I wouldn't be surprised if we saw it here on Ascent. Um, looking at the economy, I do think both teams should be able to buy up rifles, and yes, we see that here. Slim is going to have that judge, uh, which is always fun. We might see some Omen Smoke judge action going on, which is <laughs> always feels bad when you're on the other side of it, for right. sure. And as, as, as well as you're doing, you know, with this game being close 10 to 8, if you're Highland, Maybe you want to activate your players more a little bit, like Big Tonka, who doesn't have as many kills this game as they did the last game, because you're on defense now, and you're yeah. Killjoy. You want to get activated, that now, is true. I'm wondering if part of that has to do with this role change. Of course, they're on Bind. We saw Big Tonka on that sky, who, uh, I mean, I think Big Don Big, Big, Big Tonka, Big Tonka, Big Tonka um, played pretty well there Ooh. on... Uh, bind, but again is now on that uh, sentinel roll and not finding as much usage here. Point Park Esports are going to be in a 4v2 situation, the opposite of what we saw last round. And I think Clark, by the way, just got a collateral in mid, which is huge, you know, I in terms of numbers. That. It's 4v2. That's what you want to see if you're Point Park, that's for sure. And I think maybe a big factor to, you know, Big Tonka's like struggles here on this map is the fact that. Point Park love going A. They do. And, and I, you know, one thing that I do want to say for in defense of Big Tonka, Big Tonka as that lone killjoy, as that sentinel, is kind of put in a lot of 1vx situations. Yeah. And it's really, really hard, especially like you were talking about earlier. This map doesn't have a lot of utility to get out there. It has more um, stalling or, or intel uh, kind of advantages, mm -hmm. but it, it's hard when you're in a 1vx, as we saw Big Tonka there, um, you know, is 1 in 14, has 2 assists. I don't necessarily think that's Big Tonka's fault necessarily. I think it's just the positions um, that they're getting put in. And yeah, trade's going out right away. Nothing super, super crazy yet, but what could be crazy is Slim with this Judge close. The smoke going to go out and probably going to play in it. 
interesting with smoke is it only covers half, but dismissive gets the pick off of the confusion from Point Park. So that is really, really big. That is massive. Highland now with the alt advantage, with the player advantage, and this is all of a sudden looking pretty scary for Point Park. But now, it's the two players versus Big Tonka and the the Jets, which is, I believe, it's dismissive. And Big Tonka is going to go down. That knife just absolutely canceling out anybody who's trying to come in for right now. Creep down on some low HP, that's for sure, and it's going to be the one to take first contact. And this alarm bot, not going to get up as far as they want, but it's dismissive kind of going in without their team a little bit. This judge still on Slim, though, is going to be able to find Creep. And Tweezy goes down as well, and Curse goes down. So Slim, with a nice judge play, is going to pay off in some fashion. And that's going to be the round for them. 11-9 in favor of Point Park, though. Still in favor of Point Park. But that is another good run there on the board for Highland Esports. A little bit. So we saw a couple crazy things happening that time. Um, I did really like the cross that, who was it, Clark, or sorry, Creep and Cursed had there. Creep, of course, like we said, um, taking uh, first contact had 11 HP, um, but because of that cross, its dismissive was not able to, to really find the lower Creep, didn't even know Creep was there, um, and was focused on Cursed. Uh, but in the end, a good um, retake there by Highland. And you know, it is now yeah. uh, two rounds separate these two teams. Yeah, and uh, you know, looking at a scoreboard, with a mirror comp game such as this, it's always interesting to kind of see who falls where on that scoreboard. Mm -hmm. Can, oh boy, oh, this is close. And, oh, Clark finds the one, and uh, that's a big one. That that's a big a, pick. That's Sun a big Sunseri pick. finding this trade. Oh, but does get taken out. Slim with the judge. Don't forget Slim's still here with this judge. It's hitting pretty hard, and that's why I like to use it in my rank games. The reload, Ooh. neither are looking, but Slim cancels the reload and takes out cursed 11 to 10 11 to 10 almost got two there but you can just see the disappointment on their faces that's still a hard situation to be put in even if you miss that one um does feel heart kind of wrenching when you knew that they were not looking that way um it's it is a lot closer now now yeah. this is highland's pick point park though bringing it very close again still up by one, and I think part of the reason Highland, I, I don't want to say they're struggling to find a foothold on this map because, again, um, very close. However, th there was a lot of change up in sort of the roles between last map. That's you know, right. we had Big Tom here on the KJ. We had a KJ last map. Um, it was slim. Right. So uh, these roles are changing. Part of that had to do with the double duelist comp we saw last time, and now we have that uh, double, initiator. double initiator comp. But again. Um, the single initiator on last map was Big Tonka, so it's not we're not even playing the same sort of family of agents. Um, the question is, is Highland just trying to play the meta and trying to play the meta comp instead of going what they're comfortable with? That's kind of what I'm, I'm tending to think. There is a pretty standard comp here on Ascent, and they are kind of trying to play into that. Um, however, I would have thought if that's what their comfort picks are as far as roles, we would have seen something very similar to that on Bind because Bind doesn't have as set of a meta. We did not have a mirror comp there. So I think that might be something for Highland to think about. Um, you know, if I'm Big Tonka, I'm normally an initiator. Put me back on that initiator. Tonka having a little bit of a harder time playing that sentinel role who was played last time by slim uh and slim is now playing omen oh. so just hard but lord diana koji gonna find a nice pick there on sunseri now it's a 4v5 numbers advantage oh. there still for highland esports is up 4v1 that is gonna be a very very clean round for highland esports and what do you know would you look at the score right now it's tied it's tied now where have we seen this before hmm. you know there might have been a few ties in this series. <laughs> there I, might have I, been I don't quite know. a few ties in this series. If you're Point Park, probably starting to sweat a little bit. If you're Point And you Park, can see Creep right there yeah. wiping his brow. If you're Point Park, you are sweating. <laughs> yeah. I mean, you know Slim is on this judge. You know it. It's a fact. And he's been playing Cat pretty much all of the games, or all of the rounds that they've started to win. So... I think Point Park noticed this and have decided, let's just go B main. Because why go into a judge when you don't have to? This door closed though. 
site's going to be stacked. And Big Tonka picking up a kill. Twizzy finding some spam. But Sunseri, you know, Sunseri's going to find one, but it's not enough. Twizzy with a 4k on the round. That's a big one, and that shows up with the Odin on this map. All of a sudden, 12 to 11 in favor of Highland. They take the lead, and now Point Park's fighting for overtime. I mean, yes, Omen with a judge, you love to see it, but... I don't think you can go in a scent game without seeing a Sova with an Odin, and that is exactly what you expect to see here. on a scent here. Uh, Twizzy with that Odin, beautiful 4K, um, lots of money to go around, but we still see Slim with that judge. I wouldn't be surprised if they have a rifle just thrown down somewhere yeah. for them. Um, but since here, you're gonna just run right up mid, Ooh. and it's not gonna find its dismissive. The trade's there, though. Mm-hmm. Selzy and Sunseri, uh, I, I love when they play together. Sun Just Selzy. like that. Sun Selzy. Or Selzeri? I don't know. Selzeri. I like Sun Selzy. Yeah. I think that might be a win condition for Point Park. <laughs> now, but I, I mean, I think winning win condition is taking down Twizzy with this Odin here. Yeah. As that's been doing a lot of damage, and Creep's going to be able to do that one. But Clark is going to get picked off by Lord... I know. I am a coach. I think. I already forgot how to say. I might it. be saying it wrong. <laughs> Apologies if we are pronouncing your name wrong. Please let us know. Please and, uh, let us know in chat before we get to a third map, which it looks like we might get down to, unless Curse is able to do it. Is able to get one now. A one v two. Curse has the spike, and of course, still has a little bit of killjoy utility on board and has plenty of time for this rotate but is going to have to be on the lookout big tonka right there but it looks like might just get timinged and it looks like cursed will have enough left. time to plant the spike two alarm bots there well the big thing here is if you're cursed you definitely know that both players are on b you saw the mm -hmm. ko knife and you know that kj has been setting up mm -hmm. on that site every single round so yes. now it's about converting this 1v2 going to be investing both mollies onto the spike it's going to be faking that it's planted for main and trying to play hell here. This is an interesting play. It does sometimes work because, you know, someone doesn't necessarily flank through mm -hmm. the spawn every so often. But sometimes hell is the first place you clear when you're trying to get to this site. Exactly. Now, I'm not sure what the... Was that a KO knife we saw? Looks like it's going to cl oh. not clear hell all the way. An alarm bot is going to come out. They don't know. Wow. And finds the first kill. And is going to be looking wow. for oh, What a play there by Curse. Beautiful, beautiful oh. fake out. Oh, oh, my goodness. That was... Lord I'm... Diana Koji just <laughs> not clearing hell there. Um, and, and, you know, why why waste the time, I suppose, thinking that it's planted for main. Um, but that was such, such a beautiful play there by Curse. Not sure if that was Cursed idea or, or the IGL creeps or anyone else on the team. I love that play. And you know what that means? Overtime. That means overtime. That is our first overtime of the day. Um, Point second Park, on the season. Second on the season. First of the day, Point Park looking to close it out here on Ascent. We'll not have to move on to Split. Um, but, of course, if you're Highland Esports, if you kind of win here, you still it's still an uphill battle. Still one more map to go, but anyone's game so this really just shows how close both of these two teams are if you're point park you don't want to go to map three you do not want to go to map three as much as you know you could be confident map three you just played two full games mm -hmm. of Valorant. you went to overtime on the second you're gonna be a little bit tired mm -hmm. going on to this map three and we've seen that mm -hmm. in point park a little bit before is yes when have. they get to map three they kind of tire out a little bit is that even sometimes work? map two right um but if you're point park right now you cannot let that get to you you have to give it your all right now because uh we know that highland is going to be giving it their all they need to win here to have a chance to win at playoffs that's a Ooh. beautiful swing there by lord diana koji and selsey not able to trade out sun Siri though and Ooh. three right there for lord diana koji and twizzy getting that fourth it's all down to curse curse did it once can curse do it again with an ace here yeah, it's, you know, as we say, it's going to be tough. Spots the jet, by the way. So that is more information. I think if you're cursed, I think you just want to run it to be here. You have mm -hmm. your setup online. Going on A is not going to really benefit you mm -hmm. in any way, shape, or form, as you don't have any util up, and you kind of have to gamble that mm -hmm. either site. 
Why not pick the one that has your Why util on it? Why not pick the one that has your util? Now, remember, uh, everyone, there is no saving now that we're in overtime. So Curse, of course, is just going to have to try for this ace here, uh, however difficult it may be. Lots of utility, lots of bodies to peek, uh, lots of places to clear. And I'm sure Curse is going to be very diligent about clearing sites uh, after Lord Diana Koji did not do that last round. But it doesn't matter. Curse not able to do it. And now... A point park down a point going into the second round of OT. Right, yeah. If you're point park, you lose this, you lose the map. If you're Highland, you win this, you win the map. So it all comes down to this one. I know we said that 12-11, you kind of had the same scenario, and that's exactly what it is here. Can Cursed or somebody bring out the nice clutch and secure this round for their team? I mean, they really have to, to bring it to another round of OT. Now, if you are point park, you do have that kind of safety net knowing that should you go to split, uh, or should you lose this map, you will be going on to split, but you need to close it out here because... Oh, the oh. flash. Is it going to be catching anyone? It does catch two, and Lord, Ayana Koji getting one more than they probably should have. Now fighting this KJ on B site, and they are going to be able to secure that kill. Is Twizzy aware that Sonseri wants to push him to spawn? And yes, unfortunately, Sonseri dashes the wrong way. Mm -hmm. And it becomes kind of detrimental to this round as it's now a 2v3 in favor of Highland. Yes, yes, but that is okay. Plant did go down. And if there are two players I think could clutch it here, it is Clark and Cursed. Right, Cursed with a big clutch. And Clark's going to get scanned right off the bat. The spam going to go down. Cursed goes down first. So now they're aware. Clark goes down and the spam on the Clark most likely going to be the final round of this map. And you know what? As this diffuse comes out here from Slim, that does mean we are going to be going to split. Oof. It doesn't feel too good if you're point park, but you really need to shake that off. There's still one more map in it. Forget what happened the last two maps. It all comes down to split here. We said this was an exciting matchup. We said these were two very close teams, and I don't think it gets more nail-biting than this. Right, and you know... As much as you could see kind of the despair on the Point Park students' faces, it is not over. You know, one map may matter in the grand scheme of things mm -hmm. when it comes down to map differential. But you want to win this game no matter what. If you don't win, it doesn't matter how many maps you win by. Now, unfortunately for Point Park, they are coming off of that loss. Hopefully, that's a little mental block they're able to get back from. It, I mean, you can see the defeat there on their faces. But if we look at round differential just in this series alone, uh, Point Park actually has one more round this series. And I think... um overall has more kills i might be mistaken on that you might want to fact check me on that i don't have the stats in front of me however uh you know that was still a very very good round there by uh the pioneers uh we had quite a few uh standout plays there um i think uh, we saw some stuff from clark from sincere really from the whole team um uh, you know, I think we might have some replays on really any of those rounds and then maybe we can deep dive into them a little bit better. Um, yeah, I mean, definitely. You, so you saw kind of the deficit was built by Point Park. They had a few rounds, but, you know, they just came back. Highland Community College just came back. And, you know, even rounds where Clark did really, really well and got certain 3Ks or 4Ks, I'm not really sure what it was, but... Clark was able to secure rounds that maybe, you know, I mean, I guess in the grand scheme of things, didn't matter when it comes to the overall map. But I, I still think it does matter when you talk about how um, the player's mental might feel going into True. this. Again, I'm not sure if we have anything there. And um, we did just talk about Clark. Um, had a couple good rounds um, that really kind of set the tone there. Unfortunately, not able to turn it out. Uh, turn it around in the end, um, but I did see some good plays from them. Now, uh, and this is, I believe, this is a Clark um, kind of round. There's two there from Clark. Right. Gets that. And I remember, yeah, the third, the third and then the Molly from uh, 
from Creep coming out. Oh, Creep got that fourth there in the end. Well, no, Clark gets the fourth, but the Molly comes out to clear. Oh, you're right, you're right, you're right. Yeah. Uh, that KO Molly, I and got then Clark memory. does get the. <laughs> you do have a good memory. <laughs> There's just so much to dissect in this game. Um, beautiful run. I, I like how they played off of each other. That is not the only round that the team was able to play off of each other. That's true. Um, they've had some really good retakes. Um, this map. Um, quite a few, I think, if I remember correctly. Um, but there's one that I'm I'm thinking of specifically. I don't quite remember which round. I mean, I know I know that it was very very heavy, and yeah, you can see it, it was the yeah in the tenth round. This did bring it up five five. It was very very kind of like crucial how this this drone just kept spotting everyone out, and Cursed was just going ham. Curse said, I'm going to take this into my own hands. I'm going to get a few kills. And the team really just followed up really, really well against each other. And I know, like you said before, the trades were there. I think I said that when that round actually happened itself, yes. I said that, you know, kind of trades do matter a lot. And I just want to say this again, actually, um, now that we have it here so we can dissect it a little bit. I mean, look at that. Curse gets two. But, I mean, look at this. You told the trades. And that's what we've said we've been needing. I want to see that one more time. Really? Yeah, me too. I want to see that again. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So, I mean, just look at all this utility here, and that's what we've been saying. Utility, trades, that's what we need to see coming from Point Park, and look how well they executed it here. <sighs> that's That's beautiful. I mean... If you really, I mean, you could take a certain, like, look at every single player every time it, you watch this round, and you could see how their plays mm -hmm. affected this team. I, I love this round, um, too, especially because, yes, it might not have been the cleanest retake as far as when you, you, you know, you can talk about a 5-1, or, or we've seen rounds where they have um, definitely that 4-2 that numbers advantage in Q4, but I think just the ability to have those trades to play off of each other um, and just I, I love how they can play off of each other. Yeah, I mean, it was definitely, you know, an example of peak performance from kind of like, you know, peak point park gameplay, which is what you love to see. If you want to see any team play this game, it's going to be perfect Valorant is what you want to see from mm -hmm. any team. Now, if we're talking about classic point park gameplay, I don't think we can forget about Sun Seri. Yeah, I don't he's, think he's kind of important, he's right? Kind of important. I don't think there's been at least a single game this season where uh, Sun Seri hasn't had a stand out round and kind of just secured that um here. So we're going to see that again coming up here. Uh, if this is uh Sun Seri gets one on Cat, ah. gets another on Cat. You're going to see it right here. One and then two Boom. and then three and they just keep going. And I don't know why they keep peeking, yeah, Sonseri. But I probably would too in that scenario because... I would. <laughs> yeah. I mean, you have to do what you have to do. But again, Sonseri did have that ace there um, the first half. Not something I want to peek, but you have to do what you have to do. This is an objective-based game, and the spike was down. Now, even though Point Park, we saw some incredible rounds from them, in the end, it was Highland Community College who yeah. took that map. I mean... You've seen Point Park get to overtime two times, and they have fallen both of those times. Not really sure how many times Highland has gotten to overtime, but you know we could talk about bringing the fatigue factor back in. Is that a thing that could be happening? And is this break in between map two and map three going to be large enough for Point Park to regain their footing mm -hmm. and say, we're ready to take on this next map, which is going to be split? It is going to be split now. I think if you're a Pioneer fan and you're going to map three, you would have liked to see them drop the first map because that means going into the third map, they are coming fresh off of a win. Now, we have seen how um, mentality plays a lot into it, and of course, we saw how heartbroken they look looked after um, that loss, and of course, that was a devastating loss. I think anyone would have felt the same way, but there's still another map in this, so um, you know, hopefully they're using this break to kind of get 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 those frustrations out i know earlier at the start of ascent we saw creep just kind of scream into i want to say the void but into the point park esports room um to kind of just get that all out and that's what they should be doing right now because we have seen good games from them on split now against university of michigan flint they did win on split and i believe that is the last time they played split right yeah uh 
Well, did they play? Yeah, I'm going to trust you on that one. I'm not going to no, think. It was Bind and Breeze against Converse. It was Bind and Breeze against Converse. So you're right. See? And I don't. I that's why do I didn't not, argue. <laughs> I don't believe there was another matchup in there. Of course, that's not to say they haven't been scrimming and I'm sure practicing. And I'm sure they've all been playing some either unrated or ranked games. Um, so it's not the last time they've seen Split. Um, but they have played it and they do have a win. So the last time they played this map, they are coming off of a win. Um, hopefully that's something that they can keep in the back of their minds. And remember, uh, they did bring Highland 2 overtime on Highland's map pick. That's right. Because, you know, as much as you want to take that map, you did pretty well for something that's your enemy's map pick, mm -hmm. which is something you definitely don't see a lot of the time. You know, obviously you like to see a close game, but it's never that close a lot. Exactly. And like we said, if you just want to talk about round differentials today, Point Park Pioneers have the upper hand. Of course, I myself am a Pioneer fan, um, but I certainly will be rooting for either of these two teams. And hopefully whoever wins today does make it to the playoffs. Um, you know, I know that's certainly what I'd like to see. We still have another As those week. hopes are still possible those hopes because we are redid the map. Because <laughs> <laughs> there is a chance at postseason with all of the games that went on today. Converse taking out their opponent 2-0, and Kennesaw also falling 2-0. Uh, no, winning 2-0. So, yeah, yeah, everything is on the table. I, I mean, anything. You couldn't have asked for a more... <laughs> the table. This is the, the table in question. Everything is on the table. The very small... It's, it's table pretty that we have. wobbly table. Hey, we love the, we love our table. We love our table. This now, is exactly the table that everything is on right now. Uh, you want to talk about not a very sturdy table. There are so many different factors that go in to uh, this playoff spot. Of course, if you're a team like Converse University Valkyries, you know you have that spot <laughs> uh, really reserved for you. What if we just you? told Converse that they didn't make playoffs? Yeah, you're undefeated, <laughs> but like... What if... What if Converse goes, oh, no, this was just practice for our next season. Oh, Completely God. goes out. Now we have to go into all these different scenarios. They, about play a, they play Point Park University in Seaval. So that would not exactly <laughs> be a fun encounter if they said, oh, we're just warming up. <laughs> well, I mean, definitely not fun for Point Park University. Um, Of course, Highland University already played Converse and also lost, I yep. believe, um, as well. I'm not sure what those games looked like, but I know for Point Park, although it was pretty close in mind, 10-13, uh, um, and again, a loss still hurts. Not as bad as that Breeze game losing 3-13. Wildfire just completely dominated on that Neon. I mean, the Neon yeah. tech coming out from Wildfire, oh. you just see Neon like, I mean, I think there were a couple rounds yeah. we just saw like Neon literally whoop. Yeah, <laughs> I poof. I saw that round when I was editing just yeah. just right before the stream actually, and uh, I watched it back and I went, yeah, I wouldn't have done mm -hmm. anything different there. And I mean, I think that's a thing. The thing about a team like the Valkyries, um, and you know, we did talk about them with their their new partnership having some of that T two experience, but it's not just one player that stands out. Certainly on Breeze, it was wildfire but i think all of their players across the board i um, able to just clutch and uh really just kind of the pop off potential for any of them was there and that's something i think point park and highland kind of it'd be nice if we could see that more because i do see the potential there for any one of these 10 players here today um of course we always have sincere but we talked about uh Selzy, that map one as mm -hmm. as our pick for the mvp um but I also, you know, Clark there on that Viper. I loved sort of the the stall potential with the mollies in the walls. Um, Curse had some great um cipher setups. Of course, creep on that brim, the the IGL um making good calls. So, Point Park Pioneers do kind of have that potential for anyone to kind of turn the game. But it's really when they're all playing together that they do that. We saw that on um here on Ascent. We saw that on Bind. And again, I don't know if you guys could hear that, but we could kind of hear a little bit of screaming coming from them. I, I, that they're getting ready they're into getting this game. They're getting ready to get into this game on split. Again, should be feeling good knowing that they have more rounds under their belt here um, and also won this map last time. But we are starting to see uh, the, comps. the comps coming in. Yeah, I mean, definitely... You're going to see your traditional kind of point park comp. You have to creep on the Astra. 
Clark on the Viper, Selzy always on that sky unless it's Ascent. And then Sunseri cursed on their same old things. But the question is, now you're getting even more roll swaps out of HCC. Twizzy, I believe, was on Duelist on Yoru the first time. Now, is on Sentinel. Was previously on And then was on Sova. Initiator on Sova. Yeah. So, it you got a lot of things going on. If now, I well yeah, uh, I was gonna say if I have to give him MVP to for map two, I think it's either Twizzy or Lord Ayana Koji because Twizzy dropped like thirty plus kills. I know. I think uh, overall MVP I might just have to give to Twizzy, but Lord Ayana Koji I uh -huh. think had more like standout rounds yes. and popped up, especially I mean right into that first map there on Ascent completely popped off there on uh that that pistol round getting a 4k right off the bat right and yeah you saw like overtime clutches there was i think two or three really really big plays that turned those rounds and made it impossible for point park esports to come back and convert and that's really all you can ask for if you're trying to be a player having a impact as as a solo i think that's the really big thing that is the huge thing now uh, again we're talking about um just the team comps that we've seen coming up here so far. We did see a mirror comp on that last map, but we don't see a mirror comp here, um, which I love. We kind of have that difference in the Sage and the Viper. Now, um, I, I mean, again, I don't know. I mean, this is hard. I, we really have to see these first couple rounds to kind of know who this map is looking like. And looks like Sanseri. Has not missed a beat. He is still popping off as he did the first game. Trying to get at least the trade on the first pick. Selzy with a little bit of a self-blind. But is going to be Slim that comes out on top in that fight. And now numbers in favor of Highland Esports. Where have we seen this before? Hmm. On a pistol round. Oh, true. I didn't even think about that. Oh, Sensory spots ahead and finds one. Oh, but it's going to get traded. The paint shell does go out, so it is going to be able to stall this plant just a little bit. But pistol round goes in favor of Highland Esports. I feel like I've said that like five times today. You know, oh, wait. it might be because you have said that five yeah. times. Right? Now, remember, there's still one more pistol round on the tape. Will <laughs> Point Park take it? I'm not sure my money's on that, but what a what a great thing to see that would be. Would be, yeah, that that's yeah. final conversion, that's for sure. Mm -hmm. I mean, definitely I I feel like I feel like there's a conversion in Point Park here, I'm not gonna lie. I feel like they usually play slow on the first map and all of a sudden they get their, their mojo on the second round. So I wouldn't be surprised to see oh it's a gamble stack on A, and it's the right call. And Clark, looking for the shorty oh. kill, isn't going to get it. But this is a stack that Point Park might be able to get something off of, but no. Um, Curse did get that pick there on the Sage Slim there. But again, it's really hard, especially when you're down that gun disadvantage. Now Point Park should be able to buy those rifles this round. Um, hopefully we see a round on the board for the Pioneers if we want this to be... Uh, the close game that we uh, all expect coming out here. Um, one thing I want to go back to, though, talking about team comps is Big Tonka is back on that sky, on that initiator, and we saw Big Tonka have kind of value to the team. I, I, I'm not saying Big Tonka wasn't valuable to the team. That was a team game, but I certainly think Big Tonka was having trouble finding that role as a sentinel. Yeah, and definitely you can see already, I believe, up to the amount of kills that Big Tonka had last game. I could be wrong. I'm not entirely sure what Big Tonka ended up on, but if you're Big Tonka, you definitely love to see yourself getting two kills off in the first two rounds. And if you're Sanseri, you definitely want to see yourself getting two kills on your gun round. I mean, I think that's just uh, a classic Sanseri move. Um, it's, actually kinda... a, it's actually a Vandal Sanseri move. <laughs> but, um, okay. You, we said you didn't want oh, us to Nate, go. Nate's telling me to leave. Okay. <laughs> uh, all right, guys. It's been fun. Oh, okay. <laughs> I have to stay, apparently. Look, we warned you what would happen if we go to map and <laughs> Ari right there with those puns. But Point Park Esports, as we should expect in this round, are up in numbers. It's now 5-3.
but not for long. Slim with that Bulldog, which is such a good gun to have if you don't have that rifle. And it's going to, of course, pick up that Look rifle. Look where the spike is. Not on site, that's it, for the sure. The spike is not on site. And away. that's something very, very hard to deal with. You have to get Ooh. spike to win. Or you could kill them, but Slim finding use with that rifle that was recovered. That, that's the, it, Point Park has to be confused as to wh Ooh. why... Highland didn't plant the bomb there, and now they must be aware of. Time is really, really low. Is Sonseri able to get this kill? <gasps> I think maybe so, but not before the bomb goes down and is going to be able to find the first, but now Sight's his. Is he aware of it? One player in screens, one in heaven is a 3v2. Slim finding two, and now this is an ace opportunity for Slim. The jiggle's going to come out from heaven, and then I believe Slim is going to peek from screens. But now the question is definitely on Will this somehow be a miracle for Sanseri? Yeah, now Sanseri not having any more utility to work with. That is going to be a pretty, pretty clean round there for Highland. Um, I think just being able to recover that rifle early on and then playing kind of in a way that the Pioneers weren't quite expecting there. Um, now, we did see Sanseri there kind of hoping to have a little bit of trigger discipline um, to suss out getting you know, before uh, killing that Cypher. Unfortunately, Twizzy was the only one there on site, so not only did the plant go down, um, but Sanseri wasn't able to find another after that. Yeah, I mean, there's only so much you can do there, mm -hmm. and unfortunately, that's Point Park's buy round, so now they are kind of in a broken buy with only sheriffs here. If you're Point Park, this is the last thing you really want to see here. I mean, you do want to see that kill going on to Lord Ayana Koji, so that is going to be a lovely sight, but, you know, you still want to be climbing, climbing back into this one. Creep goes down to Twizzy from the Phantom in mid, so... Ooh, the res coming back up. Player advantage now falls on to Highland Esports. And now, now is where you worry if you're Point Park. Yeah, not only do they have the player advantage, they also have the gun advantage. Only one ultimate there on the side of Point Park. It is Sunseri with that raised ult, but not sure if it's going to be invested quite this time, just given the situation. Ooh, and the shots are found. The flood is on the site, though, Cursed. Are they going to be able to get a second one and getting double swung? Yeah, that's not going to go super, super well, and Sunseri is not going to be able to find the pick on the lurking. Cypher in heaven either. So it's going to be a 0-4 start for Point Park. Now we have seen them nearly come back um, for more than that. It was 7, well, 0-7 for uh, Point Park against Converse University and brought it very close with finally getting 10 rounds on the board. But this is, this is different. This is make it or break it here. And this is not Converse University. And this is not your map pick bind. Um, I think... At least from what I'm noticing, I think that loss on um, Ascent kind of really is getting to them mentally. Yeah. But I really think if they're able to kind of push that away and push the first couple rounds um, just out of it, I think that, I mean, they definitely still have a shot. It's still only in the early rounds of the game, but right. very tough to deal with. I mean, definitely, you, you know, Coach Sam's got to be saying some inspiring words of wisdom right now during this timeout. And you got to think, I think, I think Point Park needs to just play like they don't have a strategy which may sound weird but i think they just need to relax mm -hmm. and not overthink and i think their raw talent might get them a few rounds mm -hmm. and get them back in this game certainly i definitely think that's when they do best um it's when you see some fun lurking raised sun series it's when you see um, just playing together doing some weird odd strat and i think that's what highland is actually doing right now to them um but i love the placement of this timeout you know just trying to stop that momentum highland esports has of course not able to stop the economy momentum but this is exactly what we wanted to see sunseri able to get quite a few there i'm um, now up in numbers right there trades were coming out but still numbers advantage for point park esports don't know what they talked about in that timeout but i loved the aggression right there you know it's interesting we saw very, very similar score lines. You know, we saw a 3-3 tie, 5-5 tie. Now we're getting a little bit different there. The Cypher ult invested by Highland. So there is going to be kind of a, you know, awareness of who's on site. But Big Ooh. Tonka going to go down to the Sun Sari ultimate. By the way, that's the start of the round. Did you know that? And he, he can get a fourth as well. 
he can get a fourth, and that's exactly the round you can hear it coming from them, and that is exactly the kind of rounds we needed to see from them. I think that was an expertly placed timeout for them. Um, they kind of were able to use that time to regroup, and then we just saw a classic Sunsari 4K to bring them back in it. Yeah, definitely. Like you were talking, the Sunsari effect. The Sunsari effect. Is it real? You know, it might be like the 9-3 curse, where it's kind of just, it's there. And sometimes you really need it, and it comes to life. Mm -hmm. Well, and I think... Um, especially something like the 9-3 curse, if you're the team with three, or the Sunsari effect here is, um, yeah, do I really think you need a Sunsari 4K to do it? No, I think any player could have done it, but there's something about a Sunsari Ace, a Sunsari 4K, even 3K if you're able to play together, um, that really just kind of puts the team back in a better place mentally, and they're able to come back from that. And the wall coming out from the enemy Sage doesn't get the spam on the cross, and... Clark maybe going to be overextending there just a little bit. Curse is going to just back off, reposition, and it looks like Point Park is going to be using their C curse here and playing for retake. You know, most players will not be on site. You know, maybe one could be under that zip line, but oh, a good time slow orb is going to make it so that Point Park cannot push in off of those seekers and now anyone could have rotated now everyone's just dry peeking out of smokes which you know you don't want to have to do but you do have to do it and slim gonna find the first curse with the trade but now dismissive and lord diana koji just cleaning up shop mm -hmm. now um that was rough we did see the sky ult invested there but i mean if if i want to name one standout player in the early stages of this game it has to be slim for me um Really, if you want to talk about a battle sage, that's slim. Lots of good kills, lots of good trades, lots of good utility. The wall, that slow orb, like you said, mm. beautiful, beautiful placement. I mean, 11 and 4. 11 and 4. I mean, that's battle sage if I've ever seen them. Of course, slim, we saw the last couple rounds. They're on that omen, uh -oh. on that KJ. Definitely playing a lot, but I think uh, seeing that KJ from them on bind, they might be more comfortable on that sentinel. And this is interesting here because, you know, Highland has so many alts here. So if you're Point Park, I think you try and bait out mm -hmm. as many alts as you possibly mm -hmm. can this round. Play a little bit slow. Let them push into you. See if they use something. Maybe poke them a little bit. See if they can, you know, get scared and maybe invest maybe a raise alt mm -hmm. or a sage if someone goes down. I, I mean, getting them to invest a sage alt here when, like, you're not even buying shields, that would be so huge if they can get a pick and, you know, sages in a position to get that and um, that would be huge for point park oh and the flash come out is there going to be a swing from creep no no there's not the enemy is aware the wall is going to come out so now it's down to can selzy pull off some hold in top of sights and big tonka is going to be the one going in first getting that kill sunsari now the one to try and be on site. This raise ultimate is invested, so not all is lost there. The trade is well. So you got one gun down. You got an ultimate down. You got a nice shot from creep out in heaven. So this round is very winnable. Yes, definitely the cypher ult invest, not a bad idea. But like we said, that sage ult is going to be invested here. And not all is lost. Four players remaining. Four Highland Esports, but Point Park. Maybe with an upper hand with this information here. And the reload could be baiting in. Oh, yes. Cursed. Shot. Aware of that reload. And Clark looking for oh. shots. And the sheriffs are just hitting today. The sheriffs are hitting today. Why do my sheriffs never do that? Of course. Ooh. Oh, not quite able to do it again. But invested a lot of ultimates that round. And what a huge, huge, huge round when you talk about not having that gun advantage. I mean, they didn't even buy shield. Some of um, the point. I don't know if any of the Point Park players did that round. I don't remember. But um, had to invest a sage ult and down to one player, which of course is Slim on oh. that sage in the end. Slim just having a monster of a game. I think maybe a win condition for Point Park might be to get that sage out of there. Um, who's just, you know, I don't know if they. I haven't really seen a lot of sages recently, especially when we've been watching. Um, the pioneers play in these matchups. Maybe they're not as comfortable dealing with that. I'm not sure, True. but slim monster of a game right now. I mean, if you're on a map like you know this one, which is split, mm -hmm. it is semi-typical to see Sage taking this mid control. You know, you like to wall mid. It I don't is. know if it's necessarily used a lot in VCT, mm -hmm. but it certainly is in your higher ranked mm -hmm. games, in your 
tier two scene. And it's a definitely a valuable choice. Now, you know, I'm not actually surprised. We do see nearly mirror comps. It is that difference of that Sage and Viper. And I think those are kind of two of those, I want to say, flex agents. You see, Viper also has that ability, a different type of wall for mid. Um, but certainly two close agents creep. Hoping Ooh. to get a timing here in Vents. Just not quite finding that value that is needed. But it looks like they are kind of rotating away. That is so heartbreaking for Creep. I don't know if he knows how close he was to getting maybe one or two. Slim, going to have this rotate, though. I think, now, three sewers. I think it was a good thing that Sky got a haircut today. Because <laughs> I think it, is. it was anything that was more close. than that, and that would have been a lot of trouble. Mm -hmm. But a site might be free. Is They're kind of selling a fake... And yes, Ooh. it's dismissive. Finds the pick on the Sunseri, and the fake goes pretty well. But Cursed finds the first... Creep goes down as well. So, numbers in favor of Highland, but time running low. Cursed just needs to hold off the plant. It is very, very doable. One spotted heaven. Cursed finds the first of that push, and now, now it's just down, and the plant goes down, and that's a round win if Cursed can just stay alive, and yes, Cursed can. Creep, very happy about that one. <laughs> Six to two, still in favor of Highland. And I don't know if you guys saw that, but right at the end, Curse actually did get the last kill. Um, so not only one on time, but also got that kill off. Always great to see. And I think they're feeling a little bit better about these rounds that they're converting. And hopefully for the Pioneers, they can bring this a little bit closer. If you're the Pioneers here, you want maybe five in this half, and you're happy with what you got. You mm -hmm. can salvage, you know, a few more rounds, and you're going to be okay. We know that Point Park likes their attack side on split, so I wouldn't be surprised to see a little bit of a game switch in terms of lead and pace when Point Park switches sides. Mm -hmm. Now, I'm not... Ooh, a camera spotting a camera there. I'm not quite sure, but just because Point Park had ooh. the first map pick, I believe they got to pick their sides first this time, too. We have been ban, ban... Uh, this would have been the last map, and then Point Park picks sides. Yeah, I'm not entirely sure how the ban process works here in the Nay Star mm -hmm. League. I would assume it's pretty similar, but you never know. And now, the outcome of this round as well. You might not know. Alt's online for both sides, but no one choosing to invest anything just yet. Selzy, with this information, is going to spot the Cypher, going to be able to get that bite, get that 30 valuable damage, which could come in handy at some point within this game. However, Selzy just trying to flash to see if Cypher is pushing up here. But no can do. As the spam goes down, Sunseri is going to be able to find the pick. But now the enemy team is aware that Curse is on site. Also going to know where everyone is with that Neural Theft coming online from Highland. Esports now. Curse just trying to stay alive, but they know exactly where Curse is. Are going to make Ooh. that out. Point Park had the numbers advantage, but of course now down to a 2v2 plant. Looks like it's going to come out there by Lord Ayana Koji. And with the Seekers, it's now a 2v2. Ooh. Ooh. Clark. Swing. Swing's there. It's now down to Clark. Does Clark have the mollies and the game sense to know where this player is? And is the bullets... Are the bullets going to find the head? And yes, and they, they do. Clark with a nice few shots. Mm -hmm. And you can see Point Park players wiping sweat and clapping. Oof. What a nice win. But that was a close win, wasn't it, Ari? Yeah, that was definitely one that's going to be going in the recap video. That's for <laughs> sure. As now Point Park crawl on their way. Slowly but surely back into this one. If you want a few more rounds on this half, you're going to earn them. And they're definitely trying to earn them yeah and i mean i will say i think every round that i've seen won by either side has been earned here now only down three rounds if you're a pioneer fan um and we see four ultimates online and we might just be seeing that viper's pit coming out from clark i love the placement of this pit and already knows there's some people there as we saw cypher throw um that kind of cage in there oh twizzy finds the shot though on creep as Clark's maybe not aware that Twizzy got all the way up into heaven, but is Clark going to be able to land the shots? Not quite. And they know uh, what kind of hit this is going to be, especially with that Sage while there. Um, and Ooh. players from Point Park just falling down one after another. What a quick round there for Highland Esports. That was a really big play by 
Highland Esports. If you didn't notice, right off the rip, there was a cage thrown out by Cypher, by Twizzy, that kind of blocked off Clark's sight line. And that really allowed him to get up to heaven, get that kill onto, onto Creep, and mm -hmm. force out kind of a response from Point Park. They had to kind of react really fast, otherwise you have someone in your spawn that you don't know where they mm -hmm. are. Exactly. Um, uh, very rough there for Point Park. It, that does put them on a light buy, but again, I'm not even... I hesitate to say light buys or even, you know, want to talk too much about that because I have seen from both sides so many nice sheriff shots this game that have really been uh, important in turning around that I don't think it necessarily matters at this point which kind of buy you're on of course being able to buy up always gives you that advantage um but right now point park esports do have the ultimate advantage three still um able to be invested and now you can see clark not really trying to push up this time sees that same cage so knows that cypher is on a but doesn't know how many more players are there can they spot this cross no it's not going to be spotted so now clark has no idea where mm -hmm. these players are they could be main they could be ramp they may have st they might have stayed in the spawn mm -hmm. and there highland is doing oh, that same creep. cage play creep just gonna get caught with utility out oh clark trying to find some value with that oh a lot of damage was, though they're does both so one hp much damage but doesn't find either of them it's now a three v five of course players are so low now there is a sage there uh, might be able to heal one of them and does have res online of course probably not going to need to invest it this round it's all down to sensei with the sheriff if i trust anyone to ace it's sensei with the sheriff the flash does make contact so they are aware that sensei is screens but mm -hmm. the headshot not quite lined up and they're gonna take a massive massive lead that is highland yeah, no, this is the last round before the swap. If you're Point Park, you got to secure this one. You have to get one more round on the board if you're Point Park. You have four ults, so you I don't see why. Ultimates. Now, if Point Park doesn't win this round. It's not the end of the not world. It's not the end of the world because we all know what happens when you're down six rounds in the first half. There is a certain combination of numbers that does exist. And if you're Point Park with three, it might not be as much of a curse as a blessing. There. Well, we shall find out. We shall find out. But hopefully for Point Park, they're able to get one on the board. Three ultimates online, or four ultimates online for them, but three online for Highland Esports. Sounds very able to get into this nice position. I think we might see some swing off contact maybe, but the Aster Star makes it a little bit tougher to deal with. Going to find one, but gets a flash there. <laughs> And that's actually something we saw, I remember, on Last, another game of mm -hmm. Split. I think it was l against... Versus UMF, right? Was it UMF or it might have been against Converse? I think I'm bind, wasn't it? I think we've seen that a couple of times. Yeah, true. Um, Selzy and Sunseri, when they play together, it's great, but sometimes... Big ult! But Sunseri gets the ult, gets Slim, who was able to get... Um, that ult invested, but oh, that's a lot of damage though coming out from that paint shell. The sky is going to be able to heal up the enemy team, the Highland, but there is no real, you know, ooh, oh. Sonseri with four sees the cipher going to be peeking over. Selzy gets the fifth, and now it's just the raise 4v1 scenario. Point Park looking like the favorite to secure this round, mm -hmm. but there's certainly any person, any team that can secure this round for their mm -hmm. own. No, they know exactly where the raise is. Uh, not going to get caught by that ultimate, but <laughs> the raise there. Uh, who is being played by It's Dismissive? Running out of time to plant. Yeah. It's the last round in the half. No real point Just in saving. Just go for it. Oh, finds one. But Creep finds. <laughs> Creep is going to find it. Going to end that round there for the Pioneers. Four, eight. And that is exactly what we said they needed to do. Now, I think another thing they need to do is win this pistol run here. I know it's yeah. hard for them. They have not really been able to do it uh, most times, but it would be huge if they could win this run and then the next run, because if they're able to win the next two rounds, it's now 6-8. Right. Um, but if they lose this pistol round, you're probably looking at 4-10. Right, and that's something you definitely mm -hmm. do not want to see. You know, not even about... The enemy team being at Not 10, but being down six rounds. I mean, statistically, that's harder to deal with 
Now, I don't know what it is that has made these pistol rounds so hard for them when I do see great things coming out from them, especially in that second pistol round. But Point Park needs to secure this pistol round now if they want to have a shot at winning this next half, I think. As much as I like mid control on this map, on a round like pistol round, mm -hmm. it is kind of tough to take mid because of the fact that if the enemy team has something like a sheriff or a ghost, they can one tap you and they're holding an angle, which means you have to push them, which means you're going to be walking right into a bunch of crosshairs. Mm -hmm. And this is going to be rough. And just like that, Lord's going to find the first one. And now the classic is at a disadvantage here. There is no chance that you are hitting a one tap from this distance. And so even if you take up this mid control, like Clark is on A though, getting one, but it, you know, there's only so much you can do. And this dog, the smoke running out just off the rip in this crossfire by Highland is very, very deadly. The flash comes out, turned by one, but Big Tonka gonna be able to get at least one off of that flash. It's dismissive finding a second onto Clark. And now it doesn't look very good for Point Park's chances at securing this pistol round. Yeah, it does not. Now, Selzy did elect to keep that classic instead of picking up a ghost. Um, and, of course, you know, that's always a preference thing. But especially in a map like Split that has kind of these op more open sights, I would have elected to take um, that ghost myself. Now, I, I have to agree with you. I don't think mid control was the right um. round. And that's another Point Park lost there on a pistol round. They really, really, really need to convert this next round. Now, Ari, I have to ask you at this point in the game, are you looking at forcing up or are you just hoping to get that pistol, uh, that rifle round first next time? It, I mean, it's a coin toss. Right. I mean, if you're Point Park and you force up this round and you lose, you are at 410. You're probably going to have to save the next round 411. Mm -hmm. You still have the money to buy up for, you know, the the, 12, the round that wouldn't be mm -hmm. fighting for overtime. So it's not necessarily a bad decision. However, there weren't many kills that Point Park got mm -hmm. for those credit bonuses to force up. So I probably wouldn't here if I'm Point Park in this scenario. I, I have to agree with you. And it looks like, just like we said, they are not going to elect to do that either. It looks Ooh. like they are going to get on site. Of course, there's still one there on site to deal with. It's Twizzy who's already found one war. kill. Ooh, Selzy? Selzy's going to go down there. That's that's a big pain shell. And now Sonseri with this Ares. It's going to be tough to secure any kills here. Ares not exactly the best from long range, especially with Clark, I believe, in, with a classic. And it's going to get cleared by the dog. Not quite yet, but the reload coming out. Ooh, nope, Clark was spotted. And now, Sonseri with an opportunity and gets one. It looks like there could have been two, but not quite. It is hard now with an Ares. You do have that ability to spray, just not able to do that this time. It was a very tough position. Um, getting more guns offline, that means they're only able to bring, I believe, two Bulldogs into this next round. But... Like we said, Point Park has to win from here on out. It's a very hard uphill battle. Um, if if this is the end for Point Park today, what I would like to see hey, from we, them... We can't talk about I'm not that saying yet. it we is. We can't talk I'm not about saying, that I'm not saying, but if, not win, um, if it is, I would like to see them work on their pistol round conversion because I think going into their next NACE and CVAL seasons, they really do have good potential. Again, like we said, had they been able to win that pistol round there, they would have been, uh, it would have been 6-8. Right. And Very doable. And, you know, there is still one week left in the NACE Star League. So no matter what happens today, they still have one game to play. We are going to be at a short pause right now. We did have a player disconnect from the lobby due to internet issues or whatever it might have been. Maybe a cat jumped on their computer. I doubt it, though, because I don't think we have any I, you cats know, in this I space. I can't say I saw any cats in yeah. there. But while we go into a short pause, Ari and I are going to go do um, some hunting to see if there are any cats in the room. Oh, okay. Well, if there is, I would like to know. Yeah, that's fair. You know, that's fair. I'd like to pet it. Okay. Yeah. Uh, I guess I'll pet the cat. I No. There's, You're not a cat there, Are no, you a cat or dog I'm, person? I'm allergic to cats, actually. So, No. You know, I'm afraid of dogs. So, I guess, I guess. I think, I mean, I was, I was too, you know. <laughs> 
Well, it looks like we were able to get that player right back in. So we're just going to jump right back into the game. Like we said, we are now down 4-10 on the side of the Pioneers. A little bit of an uphill check for them, but they do have that gun advantage. Ooh. Clark already finding a pick Ooh. on Slim, and it's dismissive. It's now 5-3. Clark looking a little rough there on health, but of course we are going to see Selzy with that sky coming in. Sunseri spots all three of them, is going to fall, but took that space. Now they know exactly where their opponents are. That is going to be a call to rotate to that other site. Yeah, I mean, definitely. If you see all three on A, you think, go B! Go B! And that's exactly what they're doing. And so you're going to plant for long. You're going to play post plant. You're going to have Clark A main, sorry, B main for these lineups most likely. And it looks like I did see an orb there. Put on bomb. Would not be surprised if we saw some lineups come out. If it comes down to that, Lord A and Akoji is coming down through a spawn. Right now, this this round does look in favor of Point Park as mm -hmm. time is on their side, guns are on their side. But Highland does have the element of surprise. And they this could do. go either way. The anti flash oh. play is big, and Curse is going to be able to find the first. But knows where the other two are, even if Curse goes down. So now Creep knows exactly where the last two are. Selzy knows exactly where the last two are. And Clark knows exactly where the last two are. Creep going to just kind of go away as Selzy's going to clean up that round. Uh, still going to get hit by the bomb. Uh, Creep the only one able to bring a rifle into the next round. But doesn't matter because you got a point on the board. Yeah, I mean, as much as you don't like to lose players on a buy round, especially when it's the bonus round, you certainly don't like to lose a round. Mm -hmm. And as much as you don't enjoy sacrificing that, you definitely can't sacrifice a round. You can't. Losing players is so much better than losing a round. Now, not when we're talking about losing players in the match. We did see that DC. Thankfully, we were able to get that fixed. Also, don't forget to check us out on social media. Yeah, we got a few of those. We have a few of those. Like right here. PPU Esports. You found this one pretty you okay. You found this one. You found our Twitch. Check out our TikTok and our Twitter, our Facebook, and our Instagram. And Sanseri. Oh, not finding the pick, but it's going to be Creep that gets that. And that's going to be a nice little opener as they might try and push onto A here. And there's the initial util coming out. Sight clear, sight clear, except there's one back there. And Sanseri's going to kind of kind of a little upset about mm -hmm. that one, you'd probably imagine. But 4-4. Four, four, in terms of players alive in this mm -hmm. round, alt in favor of Highland. Alt in favor of Highland, but as far as plant and post plant, in favor of Point Park. Now we do see Twizzy coming up here, but Creep was ready for that. That's beautiful if that you're Creep. That was beautiful if you're Creep. Curse was not gonna get hit by that flash, but knew exactly where it's coming from. Point Park now up 4-2 numbers advantage. I know Point Park is playing like everything rests Ooh. on it because it does now. We did see a little Astra Ooh. damage come out, but the better Astra here on this round is Creep. A 4K from Creep getting that last pick on the enemy Astra, Lord Diana Koji. Yeah, that's 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 four kills for, that for is Creep. Four kills for Creep. So Creep, do you want to do that next round too, or should we maybe, pass it on? Right. I don't care who does it. Creep, if you want to take it and you think you can do it, go ahead and do it. Not just next round. Let's see five more rounds like that, and then you can pass it on. If you secure this round like you should, you know, I don't want to say that they will, but if you can secure this round if you're point park, it's 7 to 10. Mm -hmm. If you can get that one round, that one gun round win, you're going to be in control for another two rounds at least exactly. for the economy. You're going to have alts online, and you're going to be really, mm -hmm. really good looking in. You know, a two round deficit is not that bad, especially if we came from six in, in the series mm -hmm. before. I'm not sure which team it was that was down six, but... It was a challenge, and it they overcame it. Challenge. Now, of course, uh, if you're Point Park, you do see that score line 6-10, down by 4, but you've already um, won half of that amount. If you think about it, you just won 2. Let's just do it 2 more times, and then 2 more times again to bring it all tied up to 10. Now, if Point Park wins here, uh, they still will have one fewer... Or, like, let go fewer rounds than... That's true. Right, yeah. It, it, well, depending on depending on how it ends. Sunsair going to find that 
pick on Slim. Again, I love that they're playing together. If Sanseri would have fallen, would have gotten traded right out. That's what they need to do. Ooh. They're playing together. Curse going to get another one. 5-2. Now, we knew they had the gun advantage. We knew that they should be able to do it. Creep going to spot Big Tonka and going to get that kill. It is now all down to its dismissive. I mean, two interesting things. Well, three interesting things. Is we saw two players on Highland Esports both take very wide angles and swing those with Bucky's. That's not exactly the most ideal situation you want to be in if you have a shotgun. Same thing goes for Point Park. They actually had a read this round. They noticed that the Cypher lurked last round, so they had their Cypher lurk mid oh. and try and secure that kill, and it paid off. It's dismissive finding a nice shot onto Sonseri. Mm -hmm. That does pay off just like that, but, you know... Chances are Point Park is going to be able to secure this one. It might be a heavy losses, though. So it's about trying to save as many things as possible. And Clark mm -hmm. going to be able to take down the final one. 7 yeah. to 10. It is 7 to 10. And that's exactly what we expected that round mm -hmm. to look like after that. Now, this is the round you were saying, Ari. Um, that is crucial. It is going to be a rifle versus rifle round. And Point Park needs to win this one to bring it 8-10. Um... But, you know, that did get a little bit dicey there for me at the end. And not quite the flawless round I would have liked to see, especially when they were up 5-1. No need to take fights that you can't trade. And here's the thing that we were talking about earlier. I believe it was on map one. But Sonseri has not purchased a gun, which means this alt is going to be used to try and find one valuable pick. The question is... Is that pick going to be there, and will it, unfortunately, bite them in the butt? Well, it does look like they're playing together, so uh, Celsi is going to be able to spot where some players are, and it looks like Sanseri is going to get that pick there on Slim, satcheled right over that wall, and that should be a gun recovered. Of course, Point Park still down numbers here. But I believe Sight is theirs for the taking site is theirs for the taking it looks like there's one very close to rmb it's going to be it's dismissive that was able to find two there on their light buy but plant is just about going to go down and it is sees the raise bot but the raise bot does not see creep there clark Ooh. holding heaven but not able to find one uh -oh. and now with that Ooh. neural theft coming out they know exactly where the remaining point park players are it's going to be looking rough for Creep. This Creep's just going to get spammed through this box. Is the kill going to come out? Not before Selzy finds his. Now, Lord Ananoki. Ayana Koji. I can't English. Finds the one and Creep gets the trade, but does not secure the round. Does not secure the round. Very close. It was tough, but now Point Park still down four points. Yeah, it's... These rounds are getting closer and closer, but if you're a pioneer... It might you, be a little too late. It's a little bit too late. You need to... You cannot be letting rounds like this go. Now, that was a pretty hefty investment from both sides. We saw Sunseri with the raise ultimate, but we also saw the Neuro Theft from Twizzy come out there, which I think was huge. What a time to play. Now, we have the Neuro Theft online for Cursed here. Mm -hmm. And that's right. So... Point Park, because they did not invest a gun into Sunseri with that alt play, means they are going to be able to force up guns this round and most likely next round mm -hmm. as well. Even if it's a win or a loss, chances are guns will be on the table for Point Park. So they are going to be looking okay if it does somehow mm -hmm. fall to match point. Now, if they are able to win this next round, that will put Highland back on a pretty low buy. So if they can win here 9-11, they can bring it to 10-11. Hopefully, if all things go according to plan. But this run is going to be very crucial. Two ultimates online for both teams. We see a lot of fights mid, um, like we've been saying. And mid control is crucial, but only if you're able to capitalize on that. And, and we can already see Point Park kind of lurking towards that B site with the attention there mid. Um, are they going to make that call? Yeah, Big and time. one of the things that I've noticed is Clark is always on this A site here mm -hmm. with this Viper wall, trying to get the info, trying to get that first pick. That Cypher cam is going to see the Sage. Mm -hmm. So now it's about, honestly, if I'm Point Park there, I'm breaking the wall. I'm saying, they already know I'm here. May as well break mm -hmm. the wall. Oh, this ultimate I mean, isn't going oh. to hit because it's too close. But Sunseri getting one and Highland getting the three. Not exactly the trade you want to have in that mm -hmm. scenario. Now Creep going down as well. To, it's dismissive, and now it's kind of looking a little bleak as that round is secured for Highland, and now it yeah. becomes match point. 
map point and match point. So postseason hopes are on the line. Point Park have to win five straight to keep their hopes alive, which it's I know we said last time. They, we did <laughs> say last time. Um, but they have to do that just to bring it to OT. Now, I'm not quite sure, going back to the end of that last run, what the call was for a curse to kind of peek that without having a gun out, especially when you know Bomb is down and Creep just died mid. I, I think it might have just been like, ah, I didn't realize how far I was out. Um, definitely feels bad. But again, an uphill battle when it's a 2v4 and you see your teammate go down anyway. Um... But yeah, I mean, this is quite the uphill battle for Point Park, but these two teams are so incredibly close, I think they do have a chance. Yeah, I mean, it, we saw it before. Definitely Highland came back from a very heavy round deficit on the previous map, so I expect that Point Park can definitely put up something here, bring this to OT just like the previous map was. Yeah. Will that happen? We don't know. But that is up to the Point Park University Valorant team to figure that out. That is, and you know what, I, I love the placement of this timeout here. We did see a, a really nice turnaround last time off of the timeout. Hopefully they're able to do the same here. I, I know this is pretty tough because I think one thing Point Park has struggled with in the past is getting their mental under control and kind of making it through this third map. That fatigue sort of starts to set in. But this is, this. I mean, you have to be all in right here. Right, I mean... I think that was Highland's timeout, so they were trying to plot how to secure this final mm -hmm. round with four alts online, four point park, which they haven't yet utilized this Viper alt, I believe, on attack. So I'm interested to see how that is going to be utilized, as it's not exactly the best thing to get onto a site and better for post plant. It's not. I think it also depends on where you're going. Um, I wouldn't be surprised if i saw it for mid control which it doesn't look like we're going to see we might see it for kind of post plant uh, i know we see it a lot on Ooh. that a site since you're getting a nice pick on big tonga there and vent it's gonna turn right back around towards this b site oh sees Ooh, sees the, the stage but is not gonna be able to trade out celsian and it's now a 4v4 a total of five ultimates on the board across both teams make that four with creep finding a pick on lord ian koji point park up in numbers up in ultimates yeah and it looks like they don't quite have sight just yet but do I'm, they know that cypher's back I there i don't think they do oh but, but the raise is not away. aware and clark's aware yeah. that twizzy's on site so now it's all of a sudden 4v1 slim bringing this to a 3v2 mm -hmm. with this res and the kills mm -hmm. online but they are aware of curse and now slim you talked about this mvp kind of of the start mm -hmm. of this map trying to bring this one back in and sunseri just running for his life as he's trying to play post plant here because at the end of the day highland has to defuse the spike mm -hmm. here now i was just gonna say i was not surprised to see that ultimate come out there uh from Slim, and it definitely was well utilized. That very well could have been game there. Um, very, very uh, costly there for Point Park, but they were able to get that win on the board. You can see um, on their faces, I don't think they've quite given up just yet, as they shouldn't. It is now, what is that, 8-12, I mm -hmm. believe? Yep, you are right there, but, you know, Highland, they're not exactly... The brokest of broke, shall we say. Mm -mm. But you, if you want to secure at least just one of these rounds, it's okay to maybe take a half-buy round mm -hmm. and just buy for next because you're just waiting for Point Park to make a mistake. Unfortunately, Point Park is not making a mistake, and Clark is going to be able to get the first two ultimates invested, three ultimates invested by Point Park. The Neural Theft, the Sky Seekers, and the Astro Wall. So this is a big investment round. Maybe this is why Highland didn't buy their full rounds. They were aware that Point Park still had their ultimates. Now the question is, is that fourth one from Clark going to be used? Or will Highland save theirs and just try and get away with maybe, you know, a few guns? Well, if they're able to save it, that's great because they're still, uh, after this one, three rounds to bring it to OT. I don't know if they're going to know about this creep alert up through heaven, though. Uh, definitely Clark going down first, but creep should be good for one. And yep, there's the first question is where are the last two now everyone playing a little bit slow but spicer spy uh cypher is spotted down by box and all of a sudden it's just down to the last sunseri going to be able to finish that up 
Nine to 12. And pretty clean round. Now, ultimates were invested, but that's what you need to do. And you know what? That's something I would have liked to see from Point Park a couple of these other rounds is investing some of those ultimates that they had on the table. They did just that. There's still one there with Clark on that Viper. Um, again, like you said, not always the easiest to use, but... We also have another ultimate online for Sunseri. Now, if Sunseri is able to make space and use that ultimate and they can get onto site, we could see an ultimate come out from Curse as well. It is now 9-12. If Point Park gets this, it's 10-12. Very, very doable. Uh, this is a rifle, rifle round. If you're Highland Community College, you're looking to finish this out right now. I'm worried that Clark didn't buy shields. <laughs> Clark did not buy shields. Clark did not buy shields. Clark had the credits, didn't use them. And that is just... I'm so curious. heartbreaking. Well, I'm curious if that was a plan. It's it's hard to tell because at this point, Point Park has to win every round. Yeah. So I think it might have just been an oversight um, and kind of not realizing or maybe they were talking and didn't ha quite have time to buy that um, as Clark was the only person who didn't make it into the next round. The shots creep going a little bit high and all of a sudden that is a main and a site completely for Highland Esports. The crossfire from Highland going to be very, very dominant as it's dismissive going to be picking up Clark. Luckily, the shields didn't matter in that scenario as the one bullet to the head will solve any of your problems. Mm -hmm. But it's 3v5 now. It's 3v5, definitely, definitely looking hard to deal with. I'm sure we're gonna see a Sensory Ultimate come out here in a second. Um, but it can't be too aggressive, that's the problem. It can't be too aggressive, but it's going to have to be used somehow, and it's not going to find any value. Uh, that is going to put Sunseri on site. It's now a 3v4, but Bomb is going to have to come down. Oh, bomb. Oh, the suck is going to be huge by the Astra, and I don't uh, think there's time for the Bomb as the kills come out. That's going to be the map win, the match win for Highland Esports. You could say that it was, it's, I mean, it's got to be heartbreaking for Point Park. Definitely, to come, definitely heartbreaking. You're up so many rounds on map two, and you can't convert it. You bring it to overtime. There's a clutch by Cursed, and it's not enough. Everything kind of falls to, to shambles. Yeah, I mean, that's tough. Like you said, fatigue starts to starts to set in i'm sure for both teams in the end of course this did go to highland who did uh, actually I, I believe point park had their their choice of um the side but but point park did have their first map pick and like we said i think it's very very hard to deal with coming off of a map loss they did win the first map of the series so highland was coming off of that win mm -hmm. they're on ascent although I, I mean i'll be very close i'm still coming off of a win um that's not to say Point Park didn't have some good moments. I think there was a really good uh, Sunseri Selzy play. I like to call them Sun Selzy. Yeah, that, that's that's fair. And when when they play together, it is so beautiful. This was the first round actually Point Park was able to get on the board. Yeah, I mean, it was a beautiful push. The teamwork really was the difference maker in why Point Park got their leads on map one, on map two, mm -hmm. and that kind of like was their turning point i think maybe had they mm -hmm. communicated a bit more maybe you know found some more moments where those kills really mm -hmm. came to light that where those team players were coming in maybe those rounds go their I way and maybe they come out of victory i agree and i mean i really just want to stress again how incredibly close in skill these two teams were um of course point park winning 13 to 9 on map one highland community college winning 13 to 9 on map two it really came down to that ascent game that was brought into overtime right two very very close teams i know both wanted this so badly unfortunately for point park pioneer fans i myself am a pioneer fan yeah. i do go to school here yeah, so it's only right but unfortunately that does mean that their playoff hopes are over officially this officially time officially this time check our math but i'm i'm yeah. pretty sure that's how now that does mean highland community college should have a chance it goes down to a couple things happening next yep. week now they will be playing university of michigan flint um who lost to the pioneers that's right uh, so highland should have a, a good chance again this the skill set is pretty similar um i mean uh, i, I kind of want to root for for highland now you know i want to root for highland if 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 
if Point Park is going to go down, I would love for a team just like us to be able to make it. Um, Highland Community College it played a phenomenal game today. I think my MVP for Map 3 has to be Slim on that stage. Yep, 100%. I mean, I think maybe Point Park just didn't expect maybe... I mean, you know, Sage mm -hmm. is a popular pick, but maybe the practice wasn't there yeah. around that Sage. They were able to to convert the win against UMF on that Sage previously, mm -hmm. but it, maybe it was the difference maker but, today. But then again, you know, UMF there uh, had a tougher time against the Pioneers in general. I, I, you know, it's really hard to say. I think Point Park and Highland Community College, we saw it in the scores, uh, two very close teams. Uh, this really was anyone's game today, and you could not have asked for a better uh, game when it really came down to determining who makes it to the playoffs. So right. I think I have to root for Highland Community College here. Just, you know, given the situation, um, it, it is heartbreaking, though, for yeah. the Pioneers. I mean, they, you know, they, the postseason hopes might not be over, but they do come back next week to play, I believe, NKU. Mm -hmm. There is a game there. Point Park statistically are the favorites to win there. So, you know, if you're not necessarily, if you're not watching for maybe the postseason game and you still want to watch every game because it's the Point Park Pioneers mm -hmm. Valorant and you want to enjoy seeing them maybe get a win, Mm -hmm. then definitely stop by next Wednesday mm -hmm. for right here, right here. Exactly, and definitely a game you don't want to miss. Uh, yes, they're out for the uh, kind of post nay season, not making it to playoffs, but that doesn't mean they're done playing Valorant. Seaval is coming up very, very soon, so you're not going to want to miss that. Um, definitely, definitely some things I think both teams can work on. Mm -hmm. um, of course, Highland University didn't have a perfect game by any means, and they are going to have trouble in that playoff stage. So I think there's definitely things they can work on. I definitely think there's things Point Park can work on, um, pistol rounds for sure. Yeah. Um, I, I really think if they're able to get those, that's two rounds on the board for them. I really think it only goes up from four there. Four rounds, really? Well, four rounds, two rounds each half. Um. And I mean, that's the difference in some of these games. That really is the difference in a, in a win or a loss for them on a lot of maps. So um, definitely, if that's something they can start doing, and I think that's something they have the potential to do, um, great players. And, and the fact that they come so close on that second pistol round means I know when all things equal, they can do it on that first round. Yeah. So once they're able to get over kind of that mental block, um, I, I think point pi point. Point Park Pioneers. Wow, what a mouthful. Uh, they're in a really good place. So definitely make sure you come back next week as we play uh, Kentucky. NKU. NKU. I don't think that's Kentucky. I don't but think that's Kentucky. I think I just heard K and went Kentucky um, as we play NKU next week. And definitely make sure uh, you follow Highland Community College and and see. You know, I I hope they make that playoff spot. You know, if they're gonna t if we're gonna lose to anyone, I hope the team moving on does secure a spot in playoffs. Right. Definitely. Want to say GGS to Highland Community College. Thank you for the games today. It was a really close one. And unfortunately, Point Park Pioneers could not come out on top, but we're glad somebody else has a chance at the postseason. So that's going to be it for us here today on the stream. Thank you guys all for watching at home. Thank you guys for watching the recap on the YouTube channel, which will be coming up shortly. And yeah, we're, we're glad you're here. We're glad you're here. Um, and thank you, Highland Community College fans, for visiting us this week. Um, hope to see you again sometime in the future. Don't forget to follow us on socials. Again, we have TikTok, Facebook. Uh, you found our Twitch. Or maybe you're watching the VOD on YouTube. True. Which we also have. And Instagram. And Instagram. And Twitter. So lots of places you can find us. Check us out uh, to stay up to date for all things Point Park Esports. But uh, that's all I have. I'm Kaiser. I'm Ari. And it's been great. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye.